for this year at least. I'm A, and I'm here today with Stormless. Hello, Stormless. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the uh, finals weekend, and it's such a hype weekend. I'm so excited. I know everybody else here is as well. And um, uh, A, just, you and I have been talking now for about two hours, just like, you know, getting everything ready and talking about the games. It, this is so exciting. Uh, four players left in the tournament so far. And, um, you know, each one with, uh, you know, a, a serious amount of cash to win, actually. I think we're in for some really good games today. Oh, serious amount of cash indeed. There's uh, twenty, well, $16,000 left to distribute between these four contenders. And um, you can see actually in the back, I've done, we've done a little thing to help today. Uh, it is a summarized version of what's left of the brackets, or it's today's action at least. And... Um, as you can see, it's going to be alternating games. So if you want to read about why that is and how it's going to work, to, it's exclamation mark alternating in chat. And the reason we're doing it basically is because we've had a, there's a requirement for everything to go through this mainstream today. And also we had a bit of a conundrum. We want to bring all of the viewers every second of action. And we also had kind of best of threes at this stage of previous double elimination tournaments. So it just made sense. And it was the, pretty much the only solution that would, would work for the tournament. So it's what we've gone with, and it's what we've, we're have having today. And I can confirm it will be Nagano and Asilda in the upper bracket uh, final to start things off. Yeah, it's uh, really exciting. And um, one of the things to, to point out, I was saying this in a lot of the games last week, is that um, at the moment, um, all of these players still have a chance of winning the top prize because of the lower finals, which would, that lower final winner will go into the, uh, into the grand final on Sunday. Um, so actually it's, you know, there's still everything to play for right now. Um, and I, I actually really like a, the, the staggering of the prize pool, the $10,000, uh, for the first place. Second place is 4,500. The difference is huge. There's so much there to, to play for, you know, third place, 2000, fourth, 900. I mean, this is uh, tense. You don't want to be like, you know, it's, it's amazing they're getting money at this stage, but you don't want to be losing out right now. You don't. So, uh, it's it's huge increments, but that those huge increments, it makes the players ensure that they want to compete at their absolute zenith for as long as possible with no let up if at the back of your mind you're happy with taking second place or third place or fourth place we're doing it wrong as uh or relic are in this case it's their tournament but as community members advising them and um it, it would be wrong to have it any other way you've got to have that staggered prize pool and we have a hell of a lot of money to distribute between four excellent players today you're going to be seeing two matches one game after another alternating they're going to be ha the other players are currently watching on as we are about to watch the first game of nagano versus isilda and i have one very rhetorical question to ask all of you are you ready because, uh, quite frankly, we're not going to give you a choice. Here's game numero uno coming on your screens right about now. Game one, fight. And he may be the actual third seed, but this guy is the de facto number one player in this tournament. Everybody fears Isilda because he is on a rampage in the competitive scene. He's been asking me questions. It's no secret that I organized the Master League and such. He's saying, Matt, how many Master League tournaments next year? When? I'm like, uh, you've got the World Championships coming up this weekend, Isilda. Hold your horses. <laughs> But, but Stormless, my venerable casting colleague, there's a player standing in his way in the north that has also unbeaten this tournament. Tell us all who he's facing. Well, whilst you talk about a storm coming up from the south uh, in the north, we have a very formidable uh, opponent. He is uh, dominant in 1v1, 2v2, uh, just everywhere. He's a long-standing member of the community. It is, of course, Nagano here playing under the name Nico. That changes from time to time, but it is 
uh, Nagano, if you remember that name, um, but we will be referring to him as Nico during these casts. He's playing as the USF from the north. He's gone straight in with USF mechanized. And uh, this is kind of looking like a 1v1 auto match at the moment. Um, you know, this is this is kind of like meta from both players right from the start. And they're going into game one talking some serious business. They are indeed, and sort of turn the heat up in this room. I'm feeling really sweaty. I probably shouldn't talk about my uh, biomechanical issues, but I think it might be because the players are playing as sweatily as possible. There's so much money at stake, quite frankly. They're playing the most razor edge meta that all of the kind of fans that want to see the likes of Asia Mint busting out OKW Flak Half Truck or, or any of the crazy stuff we've seen that player do. He's in the lower bracket final in in the next game. No, these two guys have gone with the most used commanders in Company of Heroes 2 today, and that's of no surprise to most of us in chat. No, this is whenever you put money into uh, you know into players' hands and you say like you know you, you've got to play the best you want to play to win. Players are going to pick the path of least resistance. They're going to be looking for what they believe is strongest, most efficient to use, requires the least perhaps you know effort, and uh, so you're going to be seeing these commanders used. And then what's interesting is what are the strategies around that? Like how are they going to be uh, using this on the field? Is the timings for everything going to be you know perfect? And, and that's what we're looking for. Um, WC51 is about to come out for uh, Nico right now, and uh, we'll be looking to Isildur for his scout car timing. I assume he's going to go scout car here, and I think the earliest actually I've seen Isildur get it is 4 minutes 15 seconds, so we'll, we'll be watching to see his teching, and he's already on battle phase 1 currently. It's um, when you see the Razor Edge meta, as we're calling it, it is all about timings all of a sudden. Because map control equals better economy equals timing. It's an RTS staple. And uh, that's what we're going to be watching in this first 10 minutes. It is going to be Stuart with the Pat 40 in at a similar time, etc. But the WC51 into Scout Car is the next two or three minutes of our game. And it is a tale as old as time. There, you know, you can't change ballroom dancing. It's. One step to the left, one to the right, etc. And that's what these guys are doing right now. They're just feeling one another out. Very much like master boxers in the first few rounds of a boxing match. They're just jabbing right now, jabbing and moving. They're weighing one another up and they're trying to poke for weaknesses. And right now, Asild has had a very strong start storm as he's pushed foot forward with his MG42. He hasn't been able to get this cut off though. That's what he'll be thinking of if he ma makes major successes. He's backpedaling for now in the wake of the WC51 because he won't. Uh, he does have Panzerfaust actually. He does have them available. He has more than enough munitions as well. Yeah, it actually, Isildur's timing right now, we said it was going to be about 4 minutes 15 for the scout car. I think he's actually going to hit that timing perhaps dead on, uh, which is really, really powerful. And um, actually, to deny the WC51 uh kind of like the, the the window of opportunity that it needs to have at the start of the game is huge it's now lo no longer the effective unit on the field and part of going mechanized is to get that early game window um so this is uh, like just insane mechanical play from Isildur. he is he's is just on clockwork he is a machine indeed and that's why it, what's making him such a fearsome player to be feared by uh, everyone in the brackets that comes in his wake because he's just seemingly got that aura of vulner invulnerability right now. Here we go, we've got the scout car targeting the plane, let's check that out. Next salvo incoming. Will it get a kill? It often does, you know. Possibly one more to come. I'm sorry guys, I'm making you all seasick right now, but it is exciting when the 2-2-2 gets the inevitable anti-air kill. Look still at the going 2 for 2 it. dancing around the back of the MG42 there, still targeting the plane, but going, of course, for that WC51, which uh, Nico has had to take right back to the base. The scout car, I think, possibly was still hunting. Oh, this is bigger news, so sorry, Stormless. We've got the MG42 in utter peril. The lieutenant's gunning him down, the rifleman, too. He's got two more shots left on his health bar, though. Here comes Big Daddy Scout Car to Shepard him back to base. And the Ostrupen, where were you when the MG42 was being harassed? <laughs> Really, it's um, a fantastic early game from Isildur here. He's now brought Panzergrenadiers out from uh, from Tier 2. 
And this is that unit that's just going to be looking for the, the line of sight blockers, diving around hedgerows, trying to just get up close on the uh, rifleman. And uh, Nico has not got an ambulance on the field yet. There isn't healing for USF, so these squads coming back onto the field slightly weaker are going to suffer against the Panzer Grenadiers and the Scout Car. Um, beautiful combination. And, uh, you just have to watch your Sildor and just think, it's so good to see someone playing like this uh, with Austin. Yes, indeed. The synergy and the symbiosis between his units is, uh, quite frankly, awesome to behold. Nagorno is a survivor, though. He is notorious for coming up against the big heavy hitters in Company of Heroes history and surviving through the early game and possibly even the mid-game onslaughts. He makes his way to the late game, and that's when this Russian juggernaut starts to really come into his own. So be watching for his uh, powers of preservation today. I'm actually really interested in Nagano here. I mean, he's continually using Mark Target from the WC-51. Um, and, you know, it's like he's probably going to want to be using his uh, few resources he's getting right now for some weapons upgrades at some point. I wonder how that's going to favor him later in the game if he doesn't get some map control back. Um, there is connected double fuel right now on the left-hand side of the map. There's uh, two territories connected very, very, uh, very, very discreetly, we'll say, on the left-hand side here. So uh, huge plus 33 fuel income from Isildur right now. He is so far ahead in tech at the start of this game. Um, you know, we're about to see the Stuart come in with the ambulance for USF, but there is a long uh, path ahead for Nico in this game. Ostrupen watching on as the rifleman are now capping their fuel finally. Let's head over to the tap map and just see what we're talking about here. It looks to me that Isildur's had his own fuel for a long time. He's finally been able to harass Nagano, but it doesn't matter because the Stuart is out. So let's get on board with this next engagement. And you can really see the lethality of the Stuart just keeping the Ostrupen out of combat for the time being. It's a really important unit right now. Um, just, just as you said, it's it's got to be very, very careful. There is a pack 40 uh, from the Sildor, so there's going to be a lot of work here. As long as he's patient, though, he can just pick off some of the infantry units, perhaps destroy some of the green cover sandbags that will be protecting the Oster infantry. You just see it there from the Stuart on the right VP, and that's just going to help him to work his way up the map slowly. Um, there has been a telemine yes, on the heard. just with the scout car right now, so... Um, uh, ah, I see. Cannot dive with those vehicles. There he is. Yeah, got him. That's an excellent dive um, defending point because, of course, cars often, uh, scout cars and light tanks often use the right and left side of this assembly here to get around the back of, say, the MG. And that will protect the flank and allow the MG to be protected against light vehicles, of course. It was probably shown in the Pack 40 positioning as well, one side of it indeed. Stuart's hit by the Pack 40, um, forced away for the time being, allowing Isildur to make it to that well notice behind heavy cover. Stuart's getting some excellent shots in, as does the Pack 40 on the WC51, which is a thing of the past now. That's unfortunate because uh, I think he was really actually relying on Mark Target, perhaps for an opportunity oh, no. where he could dive with the Stuart. Hasn't happened though. Neither did that bundle mate. Well dodged by Nagano. Double vetted uh, vet one rifleman come in. Don't forget they've got uh, anti tank rifle grenades should they need them. Forcing everything off. But uh, the bigger picture is double fuel for Isildur. We're going to go over to the unit in the left, the west of the map, that was capping all the while this was going on. So that's just showing his excellent map control, meaning a Panzer IV will be out rather quickly if Nagorno doesn't uh, make amends. The enemy is taking our territory. I'm just watching this, uh, this scout car. Nearly, I think actually if the rifleman had run up a little further, the, the fire could have detonated his own teller there. But... Uh, Nagano is uh, not not really confident to do that right now. He has teched up for grenades, by the way. He did not go for the weapons rack. Pioneers down. They drop the flamethrower. Will the rifleman be able to get there? The MG needs to suppress them before it gets so they can't pick it up. Oh, no. And he used smoke from the lieutenant to ensure he's now got an urban assault rifleman squad. That could prove vital. 
It's um, one of the more controversial RNG elements left in the game currently, Stormless. It's one to... Uh, a lot of competitive players aren't a fan of uh, randomised uh, weapon drops, but I think a lot of fans are. It does indeed offer that level of excitement and something to fight for. So you just have to ask yourself, we wouldn't have had that moment on commentary should uh, that, you know, these flavoursome character-filled moments, they are random, yes, they are a little bit counterintuitive for a competitive title, but they've certainly had a lot of excitement. Panzer Grenadiers, oh, being annihilated there and forced away. I mean, uh, what you're saying is very true, and actually, um, you know, this tournament being played in the, the tournament mod, I mean, actually, I think there is some kind of recognition that at high-level gameplay, these things can be removed, but hey, leave these tools in for the majority of the player base because they love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what makes the game absolutely, you know, unique. Uh, by the way, fantastic positioning from the Pack 40 here. The line of sight that was needed to fire that shot through a gap in the fencing just shows you that Isildur has really, really got, uh, you know, a firm grip on, on how to play this faction, how to position the units. Um, but just like you were saying earlier, Nagano has been in this situation so many times in his career as a Co2 player. Uh, you know, he's working his way back on the map. He's got great need here. He walks into it. Ostrup in peril. Rifleman could finish the job here. Will they get the finishing shots they've got? Yes, they did. They had one M1 Grand Rival available to them and they were managed to get the shot they needed like a sniper. That was fantastic by Nagano. That could be what he needs. And it was that urban assault rifleman that helped him do it, Dan. It was nothing else. The flame damage of that first salvo and then the nade and then that one shot. Oh my. However, Lieutenant yeah. could no go down. Sturm Gervais couldn't get the job done. It's funny, uh, the, the tech to grenades here was just such uh, a sensible choice for Nagano. That is actually what's allowing him, instead of going for that weapon rack, getting the bars, having those drawn up long range engagements, he's flanking, he's throwing the grenades, he's hitting retreat paths, he's hitting uh, cover positions, and uh, you know, look where it's getting him, squad wipes huge health reductions on, on units and models and squads, and it's just allowing him to take so much territory. Now, double fuel in the hands of USF. That is powerful. It is. It really is. It gives them that ability to um, start building up that US steamroller approach. He's also got one of the vital elements of the steamroller, the Stuart, is having a re really decent game. He's not been too aggressive with it, hence why it's not exploded due to a Talamite. He's just kept it kind of at mid-range, gone in, gotten a few shots. Importantly, um, lowered Isildur's manpower economy through no cost of his own. Because that's the great thing about a light tank. It doesn't trade. It just kills. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. Yeah, it's... Company of Heroes 2 at the moment is uh, has an incredible kind of mid-game for light vehicles. And um, I actually love watching the, the mid-game. There's uh, so many cool units with so many cool abilities. And... Um, yeah, that's why we're seeing them so commonly at the moment. Uh, Nico, by the way, had the uh, M1 AT then out for USF. He's got it ready because uh, if you look over on the right-hand side at the moment, it's sealed or he's teched up. He's bringing out uh, the Panzer IV at around a 14 and a half minute timing, which is uh, a good time for a Panzer IV to hit the field. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's going to be a dominant unit for a while, I think. Not as quickly as he could have brought it out, though. Notice he's got a good amount of 40 in the bank there. Good bit of fuel. So, But here it is regardless. The Panzer IV is on the field. And Isildur now knows he's in a, he's in a game. Stormless. It's not like Nagano has just capitulated here. In fact, he's done the exact opposite. He's fought back. And Isildur's not really had that very often. He's overwhelmed people, quite frankly. But Nagano here on form today for certain. You're, uh, you're absolutely correct. And, uh, Nagano just is pushing double fuel constantly. Uh, he's now trying to take fuel on the right-hand side. He's got the lieutenant there with a penetrating shot from the bazooka. Actually, really important having the bazooka there, trying to get that unit to veteran C3 so it can sprint around the map later on and just uh, be a huge capping unit for the US forces. Um, Let's talk about Isildur for a moment, because right now he's got uh, three frontline infantry which are Ostrupen and they're not, they're going to start losing their, uh, their effectiveness um, against the riflemen, especially now that they've got the flamethrower to burst them out of cover positions. Um, Isildur seems to be lacking uh, in army here, so where is he going to go now? He's got to get the LMGs up, he's got to go to battle phase three at some point 
to make sure he's got that backbone. But you're exactly right, the Panzer Force Generalist unit, and don't forget now, it's up against two, count it, two M1 57mm anti-tank guns. Nagorno is building a wall of anti-tank, and he's going to use that to absolutely nerf the Panzer Force area of operation. Nice big round there from the, of course, fire armor piercing, discarding Sabbat rounds. And that means that A is nervous. He's in a massive tournament. And he's having to read the, <laughs> the title card. <laughs> I know what it's called. <laughs> I'm not leaving anything to chance. Anything to chance at all. 2-2-2 two, two, two on 8 kills. Veteran C2. Just look. Just look, of course. I always show this off. The Sight range on that thing is unnatural. It's like a satellite, a spy satellite. <laughs> it's a very, very important unit to keep alive. I think especially now that he's going to be dealing with the M1 anti tank guns, the range of those is, uh, is really good. So you're going to want to be able to see where they are, how to flank them. Um, that's going to be uh, an important tool here. Um, this is. I'm just looking at uh, Nagano right now, and uh, he has got the resources for Major. He's not done for that tech yet. Um, it's not even in the build currently, so I'm currently thinking he needs to get some kind of armor out. It would be a perfect complement to this army. Like, why is that decision not being made? He is losing territory now. Oh, what a bait there in the east. He kept his captain in that situation for naturally long. And Silda should have been thinking, why is he doing this? Oh, yes, there's the steward. It's eating a Faust to get an Ostrup and wipe here. He cancelled the, the Faust in the end. However, urban assault riflemen could die. A tale of two survivals there. They Like ships passing in the night. Either <laughs> could have been eaten by a giant whale. That analogy doesn't truly work, but it will, will pretend it does. Panzer IV pushing in with Pack 40 fire. This game is all over the place. It's messy, and I like it. Yeah, we, we cast a, a match on this map last week, which actually made me feel like, wow, this produces some slow games, but these two players are constantly at each other's throat. They are the full width of the map, and they are... Uh, having a fantastic game together. VPs right now, not too dissimilar. Obviously, Isildur still has the lead at the moment, but uh, I actually think, given what the early game was like for Nagano, he has uh, actually been playing this very, very well, but where is the tech? Here's the Major coming up now, so we're uh, going to start seeing the tanks rolling out. But uh, it's a bit late for my liking, eh? Maybe, maybe a little bit of that Scott. We saw, of course, in that famous uh, one-hour, ten-minute game between Loveness and Devem. Any, anything to just absolutely stop these Ostrich from standing behind cover. He's really going to push Isildur off the victory points. And, um, you know, big shout-out to Amelie Fields. This is the best new map we've had since Crossroads by far. It's just got such good ebb and flow. Well-spaced uh, territory sectors as well. You just don't realise how good the flow is until you're enjoying a spectacle such as this one. Uh, really it allows the best players to uh, bring their A game. Stuart, by the way, nice little 10 kills, but big shout out, Dan. I've got to say it to the Urban Assault Rifleman on 21 kills right now. <laughs> Enemy forces are securing yeah, our I think territory. maybe the uh, flamethrower and the grenades have been uh, quite helpful to that, that statistic. Double flamethrowers, by the way, on the pioneers for Isildur. He's just going heavy up the field right now, trying to burn those units out of cover, getting the Panzer Grenadiers with high DPS close range to try and get in there. They're forced away, of course, by the Stuart. Um, but look at these Pioneers. What resilience they've got to go up to the front line like that and just continually burst uh, these these flamethrowers onto the What's an assault this is? I'm telling you, he's got every single unit in, involved in this. Yes, he has been pushed up in the east, but that just says what a good defense by, by uh, Nagano. It must have been. But there's too much to talk about there. We had an assault from every single unit in unison. Great combined arms, but well defended by Nagano. Just biding his time, sticking behind cover, dodging what he needed to dodge and throwing what he needed to throw. It's a shame, actually. Out what? of that engagement, oh, the grenades, yeah, those grenades have just been so, so brutal for Isildur in this game. And fortunately, Ostrupen, quick to reinforce, very cheap to reinforce, and that's probably the reason why his manpower has not been hit so hard right now. By the way, watch the Telemine with the scout yeah. car, because if the, you know what's going to happen potentially. Got to be so close that he's not firing near his own telemine. Could use it like a demo though, can't you? You can blow it up to uh, kill the infantry. For the new players to the game, telemine's 50 munitions. It's one of the best tools in top level coming in heroes because it one-shots light tanks such as the Stuart and heavily immobilizes uh, tanks such as the Sherman we have currently on the way.
Dan, let's have a little uh, half-time look at the stats, shall we? KD-wise, oh god, it's so equal out there, 89, 87. <laughs> Uh, and let's check out the graphs as well. Army value-wise, you can now see Asilda's back in the game, baby. And then on points held, my uh, second favourite graph, you can see just how even. The, they've been trading seven or eight territory points control for most of this game. I, I think that graph is uh, is going to change very soon. Now we have the 76 uh, millimeter Sherman on the field. And uh, there's, a, there's been a big bank of fuel. For Nagano in the game, he's uh, going to be coming up to another tank soon. And I, just looking at uh, Isildur, actually Isildur with his tier four up already has uh, he's close to getting something like a Panther, which uh, Panther Brumba. Not sure which it would be right now. Um, I think he could go Brumba here. Um, that's an interesting choice. I think he's actually going to be thinking about that right now. Which one? Which one is necessary? He's having a trouble with the U.S. infantry, so. Uh, it's going to be a, a Panzerwerfer. <laughs> nice, there two. you go. Well, that allows him, of course, to get a Panther as well. It kind of fuels a little bit less than a Brumbear, etc. So, you know, maybe he's got the right idea there. But he certainly will, might need a little bit more AT because that Sherman could have a field day. Um, but indeed, the Panzerwerfer is an interesting choice. Stormus, I know you're a big fan of Panzerwerfers. I'll let you be on duty to tell me how well a Silda uses it in your estimation. I can tell you right now, there are a few players that use this well, <laughs> so please don't get your hopes up. But um, hey, we saw fantastic Panzerwerf use in... Um, who played with it last week? Do you know what that slipped my mind? Um, uh, Dev M, actually. Um, you know, he, he had a great... Well, he had a great few misses at the start, but then he really started to get it going. It was Feynmanville, though. I think it's very easy to use on Feynmanville. Anyway, uh, here he is, the uh, Panzerwerf. Yeah, I actually think here he's going to be relying on the Panzer IV and the Pack 40 to move up, and then the uh, Panzer IV may be using, maybe there to apply pressure to the AT guns. Yes. We're about to see that happen now. Um, but let's have a look how this pans out. That was the best camera angle I ever got on a Panzer IV, ever. And uh, it didn't kill anything. Why couldn't that have been like a five squad squad wipe? Damn it. Anyway, 222 did get to Vetra C3, so better mobility and all kinds of jazz. Sherman, however, <laughs> just telling him why you need that reverse gear. <laughs> yeah, the Panzer were for now. I mean, despite not having the, the great first shot, and that is just what happens when you fire at max range. But actually, the fact that it's on the field now will be causing stress to Nagano. It means, okay, I need to constantly be thinking about what's the recharge time on this unit. I cannot be clumping my units. My opponent is capable of doing this on the retreat path. By the way, Panzer IV in trouble here. And Nagano, he's taking those ground attack shots just at max range. And he was nearly, uh, nearly lucky there. Taking them on the chin, however. Well, let's keep an eye on the victory point situation. Of course, Nagano has lacked two victory points for a long time. He's down to 210. That's a deficit of 158 right now as the Panzer Grenadiers go forth with their Vet 3 brethren. Stuart watching on the sniper unit. Only 14 kills. I'm saying sniper because he's definitely keeping it at mid-range for the majority of this contest. Uh, it's great to see that on Veteran C3. It shows you he's been really kind of going around with it, doing a lot of work. It is, it is a workhorse for uh, the US faction right now. And uh, I think... This is very good play from the Stuart. Um, good thing with the Stuart as well. It has very good abilities for the late game. Um, great engine stuns. Uh, that will help with whatever you know, late game units. Oh, here he is. The Panzerwerf has fired, but he needs to get out of there because the Stuart's rearing his head. But he's in a bad part of town. Pack 40 could get the kill. We did see 180 gun get decrewed, but he'll be crewed soon enough by the five man Vet 3 rear echelons that are close at hand. Really uh, good, good play all round. By the way, you see the scout car goes to the fuel point on the right, just ready for the pioneers to, to cap and repair at the same time. It's good planning. Good planning from the seal door. Just making sure that everything, again, still on schedule, maximum efficiency in everything he's doing. Um, and it shows because, like you just said, he still has the VPs. He's on a triple cap and he has massive map control during this game. We just saw there the extra health buff you give yourself with heavy cover. Planting sandbags on every point. It's sometimes not the most attractive of gameplay, but it certainly works. Tanks just can't kill you. They have to 
target the sandbags first and then we saw as soon as the sandbag died a Silda hit retreat that is literally telling you the mechanics of our current meta and how it all works that's <laughs> GES minefield on the right side fuel right now and um, actually Nagano completely spotted that Oh, Panzer Force spotted two infantrymen walking there and decided to turn them into duck liver pate. And we do indeed have the Panzerkampfwagen front, the Panther, on its way. So, uh, Isilda is listening to rank 500 AE with his build orders. Let's see how that pans out for him. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm actually pretty uh, excited about the late game potential here. We'll just look at this Panzer off the shot. I'm sure you're on top oh, of it. That's, that's a good one. Get rid of that veteran C. That's what he's doing. But, um. And it's nice, the, the immediate aggression that comes afterwards with the Panzer IV. He's got to be so careful, of course, because the M1AT gun and Nagano is constantly taking those ground attack shots. You see it there, overshooting. Oh, what a shot there by the AT guns. Scout car demolished, a burning wreck on the battlefield. They were recruited very quickly, and those new crew members learn how to fire in even faster time. And that's a very dead Vet 3 scout car. Could be a sore loss for Silver, to be honest. It's a huge loss, because I think the scout car has been spotting the AT guns for the Panzer first. So now there is more of a need for the Ostrupen to run up the field, which right now I don't think they want to be doing. They have the LNGs, they can sit at range and take those engagements. Um, I maybe wouldn't even be surprised if he built another one right now but uh nico or nagano as he's more commonly known is going for two uh sherman tanks meaning that he's actually in a recoiled state right now and he's ready to well these vet three rear echelons are ready to die that's really unfortunate oh gosh missed micromanagement there nagano did not see it perhaps a little bit of nerves there and uh, didn't notice it happening unfortunately for him Panzer four reversing away captain also dying what's happening to the russian he also drops the Browning. Oh dear. Again, unfortunate weapon drop. Um, but that is the, uh, the makeup of the game. Here's the Panzer for again. Has Easy AI taken over for Nagano? Has he surrendered, dropped from the game in a 4v4? <laughs> Something happened there. Not so sure what it was, but he certainly lost two of his infantry squads. That is unfortunate for the Russian. He's still okay at the moment. Uh, it's it's not too bad. A lot of what we're seeing is perhaps you know just with the one squad wipe. He's getting out of his tanks a lot. When he gets back in, you realise okay, he's still got an army. It's still quite powerful. Uh, part of the mechanised, of course, he does have access to combined arms. Hugely underrated ability. Oh, he's uh, just going the... for it, Stormus. He doesn't care. Oh, he hits a telemine. Of course he does. <laughs> but that's why you don't now. throw caution to the wind. But he's oh, he's going to lose one of the tanks. This was the armada he was building to get himself back into this. And he just, he saw Red Mist almost. He lost two squads through power, possibly his own error. Um, and he got maybe, got kind of combat fog or, oh, he could lose the other tank here. But regardless, you know, that's why you don't throw caution to the wind. You just can't hope to throw everything at it and hope for the best in the heroes. You have to be tactical. You have to get your uh, rear echelons that no longer exist to get a minesweeper and push up the flank. You know, and one of the most basic units in the game, Stormless, is key to getting those huge flanks off. Sorry, I was just focused on something else. <laughs> Ostrupen here against the Major, gunning them down with the LMG. Sherman backs away as the Stuart gets hit, flush in the face by the Pat 40, forced away. In the meantime, Panzer Grenadiers. Getting into the central victory point, but they eat a grenade. They march on regardless. They're looking for the kill there on the lieutenant. Will they be able to get it? This game's continued to be messy. It's all over the place. Got the Panther pushing in. However, he is protected. And there's the Panzer Werfest almost. Where's the target? It's on the AT guns. Oh. They're all bunched up. And somehow survive. A little bit of luck there on the spread for Nagano. He is incredibly lucky that that uh, shot was at max range. Um, you know, this is really scrappy from Nagano right now. Uh, the Major was just left to die on the left-hand side VP. 
the positioning from the AT guns, I mean, like, you can't continue to use them in close proximity like this. A good Panzer for shock could take them both down, and then you're subject to the Panzer IV and Panther rush. Uh, oh, Nagano talking right now, about rushes. Yes, indeed, the Stuart's gone in, looking for the Panzer Werfer. Oh dear, oh dear. It was not the best dive I've ever seen. That was like the Titanic diving. It, it, you know, you can't pull it off as deliberate, no matter how hard you try. It all just ends in tragedy. Yeah, it shows to me that, uh, and do you not, know we, we, we heard the VPs drop down below 100. That's a normal pressure point for players when they start going, eh. Um, I'm pretty sure Nagano just went, eh. Uh, did point. he? <laughs> oh my god. He should probably see a doctor about that. <laughs> but uh, he certainly is like David Bowie and Freddie Mercury. He's under pressure. Dun 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 dun. Right now, and it's really showing so much money at stake, so much training and preparation has gone into this tournament. And first game jitters have happened for Nagorno in the last five minutes. The Iron Russian, the steel hammer of Nagorno has proven a little bit brittle in this game when he couldn't hold his nerve, unfortunately for him. And I hate to be brutal with my casting of the situation, but that's how I see it. No, it's, uh, it's correct to say Nagano has fallen to pieces here and he's uh, still sticking with it at the moment because Company of Heroes is a game that can change in an instant. He's got a lot of resources still. He's got a lot of munitions and fuel. So um, it, it, the only thing he doesn't have is time, the invisible resource. <laughs> and time is a cruel mistress to us all. As, uh, indeed, he's beginning to... Oh, we got combined arms from Nagorno. He's going to go for one mad push yet again. What? Increased <laughs> rate of fire. Sherman's are in action. We've got an M1 recruit. We've got a Vet 3 Pack 40, which is kind of like a Pack 43 in terms of its use on the battlefield. It becomes a badass. Uh, actually, I mean, it, it's such a shame. If he had a bit more fuel, I'm just thinking... I know he needs the anti-infantry capability, but you've got to get a Jackson here. Um, those Shermans are, are not, you know, they're, they're not going to perform well against these tanks. Plus, you've got the Panzer Earth to counter Pack 40. Jackson's got to be used here. Um, is there time? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. If it was a 1,000 VP tournament, yes, but uh, alas, not. Down to 66 and dropping. And Nagano's fresh out of ideas. He may have clicked the ability, but it, it didn't actually reap any rewards. He's going for another Sherman. Okay. If this was another Sherman in combination with all the other Shermans. Oh, it is. He does have three Shermans now. Beth has recruited them. He hasn't lost one yet. Fair enough. <laughs> is that true? He hasn't lost a Sherman despite getting them tagged quite a few times. Nice grenade on the Ostrupen there. Vet 3 Ostrupen die with a whimper. We now... Oh, we do have one which has been target weak pointed by the Pat 40. So, uh, he hasn't actually lost a Sherman yet. He has he has been preserving those reasonably well, but again, down below 50 VPs now. Limited, sorry, limited time to make use of this. The Panther pushing onto that Sherman, getting rear armor shots. Here's the Lieutenant, by the way, the Vet 3 that was needed. This unit has to just run, run, run. And, uh, and cap everything. But with three Shermans, <laughs> I mean, actually, three Shermans can do this. Um, you know, we've only got the one pack 40. There's Ostrupen, but I mean, like, there's not a huge offensive army for Isildur here. It, it's possible. The right he's, flank is he's possible. He's going to require a miracle. He has to stop any further capping by Isildur. But it is true, in theory, if you gave the likes... Well, if you gave Nagorno a fresh pair of eyes and said, here's your unit composition, break this puzzle, he could probably do it. Can he do it right now? That's a different question. Three Shermans, four better three infantry. He needs everything to go in, and he needs it to happen now, but he just finally lost a Sherman. It cooks up from the inside. He's got a damaged engine on the other. We've got a recruit pack. That, he did lose the veterancy, yes, but it's ready to attack. Yeah, the, the decision to dive on top of the pack gun was really, really important, and uh, it worked temporarily. Losing the third Sherman is absolutely huge. M1 and T gun has just got a terrible line of sight on the Panther there. One Sherman down, second one engine damaged. I think this is GG. 
Welcome to, to Asilda's Sherman Cook-Off. Bring your own beers, because he's only providing the burning husks of, uh, or remnants of American tanks. As he's now a predator on Amelie Fields, looking for the third and final Sherman to die. It should be the new, uh, bring your own brum beer. Ah, yeah. We should make a, a beer called Brum Beer. Would that be cool? There's, you have the Spitfire beer, Lancaster bomber. But we're not there's, tapping there's into the, there's room for it. We're not tapping into the Verabu market. Oh, you know, we need German <laughs> tank name for beers. Oh, we just had something die. I think it was a building or something. I heard shattering windows. Anyway, the yeah, Panther I, I, survived I, I, the uh, M1 AT gun pushing forward. Uh, but you know, it, it's writing on the wall, isn't it? I've got, I've got a big point to say as well, Stormus. You know, the Major and the Rear Echelon dying. If he had the Major alive, he could have dropped artillery on the pack. He could have thrown smoke. If he had the Rear Echelons, he could have swept the Tala. Those two small losses, when he wasn't focused or whatever it was, the they mean a big point. monstrous flank can't be pulled off. And, and that kind of synergy, mm. synergy and balance, you've got to take account for it. Yeah, it's... Um, you have to replace those units. If they go down, they're just absolutely essential um and you know you see the the problems with not going in with minesweepers grenades being traded in the uh, in the west there yep bit of grenade tennis and grenade has come out on top set to one. and nearly <laughs> game set and match for uh Isilda. 23 victory points remain in game one and don't forget guys these players will have a break next we're gonna watch game one of the other series alternating today though they're warming up for you right now. Devem versus Asian Mint is up next. Go over to the brackets to establish how that works. Or exclamation mark alternating in chat. It's um, an innovative solution to a scheduling problem we had. And um, it's going to be pretty exciting today. Also means the players will be rested and ready for the best of five loser bracket final, which is also later today. So... Uh, we're taking good care of our players. They're going to be very well rested, and we're going to be seeing the best out of them. As long as we can get hold of those nerves and jitters, as we saw Nagano have in this game. Yeah, it's, um... Hey, it's still been a very, very good game. Uh, we saw Nagano, you know, come back from a very, very difficult start against the Sildor. And is this a Panzer up in the base? It is in the base. Oh, my. He's finishing this game off with a punctuation mark. And it's Panzerwerfer shaped. I wonder if that's part of Wingdings. I don't know. But uh, but well played to Isolde. I, I don't think this has been a good game. It's been a good uh, demonstration of Isolde's capabilities, in my opinion. He is the de facto kind of number one seed. And Nagano has dropped from the game. GG, well played. That was game one, and uh, Stormus, are you enjoying yourself today? How are you feeling, my friend? I'm feeling very good about today, and uh, that game certainly set the good feelings in motion. Um, look, uh, when we look at the two players who are in the, uh, in the upper finals right now, I mean, really, both of them haven't lost a game in this tournament. Nagano lost one against Von Aston in the quarterfinals, but otherwise, it's like 2-0, 2-0, 2-0 the whole way through. Um, so, you know, actually, it's it's going to be a good series. We know that. I think that game, like, just showed that Nagano's definitely got potential. He's definitely got potential to get on top of Isildur and just make it happen. But um, it just sadly didn't happen in that game. Um, you know, just a couple of losses, like you said, it led to some crucial things being, uh, you know, not being available. Mine sweeping, uh, no access to, like, uh, bars because yes he went for grenades and that was essential to help him get back in the early game but then he did not get any like uh, uh you know infantry upgrades uh later to that point which you know perhaps made it difficult for him he was floating munitions hard he lost the major so he didn't have the artillery to drop on top of the at gun the machine gun like without those tools for usf it's very difficult so um 
as you said, rightly so. Like he's going to have a break on the next game, and I think he'll be able to just calm the jitters down as the first game of the day, um, and uh, you know, come back with a, a fresh attitude and hope. I'm, you know, I hope all series go to ace games uh, because that's that's always awesome to see. Mm. But um, you know, I, I, uh, Nagano is capable of taking a game off Isildur, no doubt. Two questions from chat. Yes, yeah, the games are live. We give them five minutes of delay, though, so obviously, you know, there's no nefarious activity. Um, also, people are asking, why is it best of three today? You may have seen previously best of five. Um, to be honest, it's just scheduling, trying to make sure the players are fresh, and also the viewers can see every second of action. I can confirm in previous double elimination tournaments, such as Operation Charlie Fox, Grand Championship Series 2, and Master League Tournament 1, um, the double elimination tournaments did have best of three at this very same stage. So we did our research before we just, you know, th you know chain made this change. But it, it should really work, and it is fair to the players, and it's what we've seen in the past as well. Um, anyway, there's me speaking as a spokesman rather than just a caster. <laughs> Try and not do that. Still, this doesn't come naturally to me, to be serious. <laughs> I have to do it occasionally. <laughs> no, you're right, and... Um... Uh, it's interesting because I think um, it's unusual, but I'm actually interested to see, you know, the, the effects of this. I think I think it is going to be positive, um, but you know, hey, that's, uh, I'm I'm excited. So um, I guess now we we talk about two very different players, um, yes, we do. and perhaps their journey, this the very interesting journey <laughs> through the tournament. So you sound far. like a life coach, my friend. Their journey, I love it. They're no longer just uh, little nerdlings such as ourselves playing an RTS game on the internet. They're on a great life journey, a voyage. <laughs> a voyage. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, in some ways, that's not uh, that's that's not untrue. Um, I, I I think when we look at the the next series, um, obviously, you and I have cast. Uh, DevM already in the you know the the quarterfinals against Love Nest. Um, I cast with Tightrope last week. DevM versus Love Nest in <laughs> their rematch in the in the lower brackets. Uh, I I didn't think at the start of the tournament. I didn't think that DevM was on peak peak form, although I thought he's playing phenomenally. Uh, but when we did get to the lower brackets uh, on Sunday last week, I thought DevM looked very very good uh he, he kind of was two zero down in a in a bracket with a in mm. the, you know in the upper finals and then it's like you know um sorry in the upper bracket and then suddenly you know he's then picked himself up and playing phenomenally against uh love nest which is hard to do it's hard oh, to do that if you hard to do yeah, yeah. But, but it's it's always funny with dev M. people seem very quick to forget that he's the longest serving member of the elite level of tournament players he's been playing at the top level since 2012 he won his first world championship in 2013 his second in 2015 his third in 2016 um, yes it's been four years but doesn't mean he's gone anywhere he's only 23 years old for god's sake he's like he's the youngest tournament player at the elite level as well as the longest serving no sorry kimbo <laughs> is younger than dev M in fairness but of like of all the guys in this final he's the youngest so it's um, uh, we're having questions about the um. Uh, good, good, good one, Commie. I'll get that fixed. Um, can you guys? Yeah, there's a Co2 announcement later today. There is indeed. Um, I've been told to not hype it up too much, so we're doing it today. Um, but we're going to talk about it tomorrow as well. Um, but it, it is pretty cool. I, I'm pretty happy with it anyway. I'm sure you you guys are all looking forward to it. Let's get this uh, little thing changed. Well spotted there. The Typos do happen. You just have to accept them into your life. Never apologize to a customer or a supplier for a typo. Because they happen. That's one of my business advice from AES. That's true, isn't it, Stormless? You had a, a big client say, there's a typo. You, what are you going to do? Oh, I'm ever so sorry. <laughs> well, in, in my industry, that's actually really critical because they're normally codes for doors. So, <laughs> <laughs> when when so I get typos wrong, out. people don't get home. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> if you're uh, in NASA, it would be the same question. The astronauts would not get home. Basically, only listen to AE. Very small <laughs> amounts of the time. Probably when I'm casting. Never ask for life advice. Probably, <laughs> thank you, Stormers. You completely obliterated my point. And I, I thank you for it. 
Inviting you, good sir, to a lobby because we are literally two minutes away from live footage of the second game of today from the second match because it is alternating. <laughs> People are predicting it's co-mobile. We've already got that. We've got raffles for it um, today. Stern Panther should be, um, I think, doing them. And uh, get you in here, big man. Yep. Just uh, are you like sending invites? Is it? Oh, so many. I'm like, okay, okay. Invite okay, Nebelwerfer. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't get away from them, mate. Can you confirm you're in the lobby? I, I am in the lobby. Oh yep. my, oh my. That means I'm loading up the game, and I'm very excited. It is, of course, going to. I'm going to have four games on Amelie Fields at least today, so we're all going to be very, very accustomed to it by the end. <laughs> Yeah, um, hey, no, nothing wrong with that. Is it worth, by the way, on, on the loading screen, perhaps just bringing up the, uh, the, the factions that are being played with the, with the bulletins? Um, if, if, if I had a, a, you know, a scene set up for that, I would. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Well, I it's mean... It's a very good, good, good one for the future, Dan. We'll get it set up tomorrow. It's a good thing to talk about. But uh, they are exciting. They appear in games, so... Yeah, yeah. well, because indeed, it's very exciting for the players that Dan is, is uh, intellectually aroused by... The uh, bulletins and commanders available. So me too, actually. <laughs> there's, there's one in particular that is is very interesting to say the least. Yes, yes. It is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking? Yeah, yeah, yes. yes. Yeah. Oh my! Yeah. Now yeah. we know. <laughs> now, now we, we know. know. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> right, we're four seconds away. Um, the game is on its way. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this, the lower bracket series between two excellent players. We are, of course, in the top four remaining players in the tournament, and right now on Amelie Fields, playing in the south as the uh, Ostir and the Ostrupen Doctrine, it is the fearsome DevM. He may be fearsome, but he's using the tried and tested Razor Edge meta we've already seen today, and he's up against a man that doesn't just throw caution to the wind. He does whatever he damn well pleases. He makes his own meta. He plays his own way. It is indeed Asia Mint playing as the Soviets with three commanders available to him. Armored Assault, Defensive Tactics, and Urban Defense Tactics with some very interesting bulletins, Stormless. Tell, me, tell us what we're seeing there. Well, um... There's two bulletins which I love to see because uh, I think these are really cool. That is, of course, the uh, TM35 mines, 6% less, and uh, you know, mines building 10% uh, faster. You, as Soviets, are going to want to lay mines everywhere and anywhere. That is a huge uh, benefit of the Soviet faction that they can do that so quickly, so easily. Um, but the third one, AE, is not one that you typically see in any competitive games. Um, or any games, in fact. Um, but uh, that is Katusha's and Panzerwerfer's build 50% faster. Um, now, typically with bulletins, you want bulletins that are going to affect you constantly throughout the game. That's why a lot of people pick infantry bulletins or mine bulletins, because that's always going to be useful. You're always going to have infantry, you're always going to want to build mines. Katusha's suggest to me that his strategy might involve building constant Katusha's. Yes. Is there any viability to this. Definitely against this build with a double pack and the MG42 of course. Amelie Field's a good map for indirect fire as we've already seen. We also just saw Asia Mint make use of a well-known um, bug. It has been a competitive exploit in Company of Heroes past. I don't think he was doing it deliberately however. One man capping. Also known as cap walking. But it's a little bit controversial but not really. MG42 is down. Conscripts are in a decent position, but what's happening in the west is the Ostrupen are taking the cut off. Asian's had a dodgy start here. DevM's had a very solid start, and I've seen him finish people off on Amelie Stormers. I've seen him go straight up the spine of the map with the MG and pin you in your base. 
Yeah, um, you don't want to be losing that that point early. Of course, it's so early in the game that this isn't uh, this isn't a massive loss. He can get back on top of that quickly, but it does kind of uh, allow DevM to put a, a bit of a stronghold uh, around the center of the map right now, uncontested. Um, it's a great time for DevM to start laying telemines. I'm, I'm sure we're possibly going to see that in a second because you want to use your, your starting munitions that way. Um, Importantly, yeah. Asiament did not lose his cutoff. Devon was unable to take it. The MG's now come up, but he's got one less Ostrupin in this position. Conscripts are going to go for a flank all the way around the side there. MG knows it. It's going to reposition and wait for it. This is classic MG play. You have to predict the way your opponent's going to attack you next with it. He's also got the combat engineers engaged in the south, so it's all eyes on the MG because the Ostrupin were able to take the cutoff in the end. Yeah, it's a fantastic early game. Uh, really fantastic. De DevM's practiced all week. Uh, I mean, he was already well practiced last week, and he's just like obviously playing against Love Nest. Love Nest brought some new builds uh, up with the Soviets to try and counter the Ostrupin strategy. That was actually the defensive tactics commander. Uh, Asia Mint here is, is actually kind of elevating that another level because he's uh, the important part of this uh, counter was having the M42 AT gun, the Soviets, to deal with the light vehicle rush from Austria. But late game, if you see urban defense tactics, you know, late game, there's the potential for a KV-2. Um, you know, so that could be where he's going here. It's a, it's a beautiful map for it. Um, so, you know, provided that Asian can get control of the, the map yeah. again, we could Providing he can get there, indeed. He's, he's got options as his commander's in the late game. But right now, DevM doesn't want to even let him think about options. He has no option but to die a relatively quick death, because DevM is all about those 20-minute wins. He tries to get on top of you and does not let you breathe. Gets you in a guillotine choke. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu style. And, uh, you won't be awake for a while. DevM leaves you typically with one option usually, and you can find that on the top right of the minimap if you're in game. Oh yes, show player stats. Oh no, that's <laughs> top left. You mean? <laughs> oh, in the in the game. Sorry, not in the not in the observer. <laughs> not in the observer UI. Okay, fair enough. Not an observer. Oh, I am of course talking about surrender. <laughs> oh yes, of course, indeed. I was uh, I was doing a joke. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Panzer Grenadiers standing by. A little bit of a waddle. Probably on the... Um, the beer the night before. Pioneers have been battling. The 2-2-2 comes to save their life against the combat engineers. Forcing them away. Uh, by the way, Teller position. The start game Teller is... Uh, if you just go south of the Pioneers at the moment, you'll see it on the road. That is a really, really good teleposition. It's so far in enemy territory, and it's exactly what you never want to concede map uh, the, the map to Dev M because you don't want to give your opponent the ability to, to you know, to, to lay mines like that. Munitions for Asia Mint have already been spent on the flamethrower upgrade, so there isn't mine sweeping there right now. Um, there may be in the future, but. M42 is out. They usually hunt in packs, but right now they're just enough to keep the 222 at bay. And uh, he's laying his own mines, of course, on the cutoff this time. I bet he wish he could have done that earlier. <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, like, I would have to expect at some point a second pioneer from from DevM because as the map control starts to go uh, starts to go blue towards Asian then uh, you know actually you already see Asian laying down mines right now we're gonna have to see minesweepers devm has been prioritizing the flamethrower to, uh, to kind of capitalize on the early game make the Ostrupin more effective against lower health squads he's used all the munitions he can at the moment Asian flamethrower is going to be vital to forcing these Ostrupin away we saw that in the previous game when Nagano had his successes um, against the Sildur, it was with the flamethrower against the Ostrupin who have to stand in cover to be combat effective, really. Mm. It's very important he stops this uh, victory point being capped, and he is indeed getting sandbags down because he doesn't want to get a triple cap against him in the early game. Absolutely. I, I see a couple of people, by the way, saying um, defensive doctrine, community defense, what? 
Um, is defensive tactics is the, the name of the doctrine, but this is actually uh, a strong counter to the Austrian build right now because the M42 AT gun, which you can call in, very good against the light vehicle rush from the Austrian doctrine. Uh, when they skip tier one and go into tier two, they, they get the scout car up quickly. This is a good uh, counter to it. But also, I think the biggest problem, which we're going to see come in soon, is the Dushka. Um, it's going to be the Soviet machine guns, um, which, you know, again, good against light vehicles, good against infantry, uh, you know, quick to pick up, quick to move around. That's going to be a problem that Devon's uh, going to try and get on top of uh, as the game goes on. He's got to try and get on top of it, otherwise he'll get dushed into oblivion. Yes, that is a verb. Coined it. it now is, anyway. And second MG42 pushes up. We've just had a mine detonate. It was up here with the one-man Ostrupen. DevM is going to continue the cap. That's very aggressive. It's just, just a standard territory, but it's no longer a cutoff because he has all the territories east side of there. Ostrupen, meanwhile, are going for a genuine cutoff. That would, of course, get rid of Asiamint's fuel. More telemines on the right side with the pioneers. It's, uh... Devem's just preparing right now. Um, this is dangerous for the scout car to be going forward without minesweepers. But um, other than that, Devem is uh, insane map control. Asiamint's still okay though. I mean, it's not so late in the game where, uh, where you know, there's serious problems. A lot of his, uh, a lot of his. Units that he's going to be relying on are not based on uh, resources such as fuel and munitions. He's going to be able to call these in for manpower. So. Don't forget as well that DevM is countering your 30 munitions uh, mines with a 32 manpower reinforcement of the two models of the Ostrupen that die. He's literally trading flesh for, for money in this sense. He's, he's minesweeping with his Ostrupen, quite frankly. Oh dear. <laughs> They won't look kindly upon General DevM after the war is finished. <laughs> yes. There'll be no parades for him, but he may win the battle. And that's what we're, uh, we're possibly seeing here. <laughs> well, uh, Asiamint here. Let's uh, perhaps talk a little bit about his options. Um, he has a good opportunity right now, whilst DevM hasn't got loads on the field to uh, start pushing some of his territory back. Um, actually, a, a good concerted push here with a lot of his units working in unison together would be uh, really, really good. He does have to to focus on that, really, and, and just try and overpower Devon. 80 grenades have been teched if that scout card does push a little bit far forwards. And there's a good aura on the left-hand side around the MG42 to flank. Oh, look at this scout car on the telemine. Oh, I thought he was going to try and detonate the conscripts. Oh, I see what you mean now. Yes, I see what you mean. MG42 has been forced away. Conscripts hide behind the well for now. Ostrupen holding firm, which has been... It's not been the tale of this battle, actually. Ostrupen is just an appendage of DevM. It's all about the MG play. If you're wondering why he's been so powerful, well, yes, the Ostrupen are cheap. Nobody's going to deny that they're current meta for Wehrmacht, but DevM's MG play has been something else. It's been really impressive. Don't forget, he's up against Asiamint, winner of two tournaments this year alone. And um, he's not, he's looked like the Dev M of old, quite frankly. <laughs> his play's been very, very good recently. And he's, um, his, uh, the good thing about Dev M, I think what makes him a very, very formidable opponent. By the way, Minesweepers are on for uh, Asiamint now. He has seen the Telemine in the East. Um, which is just being targeted by the M42. Um, but what makes DevM is so, like so formidable is his uh, knowledge and also the knowledge he applies under pressure. Um, he's very good at developing those counters on the fly. He's very good at keeping track of uh, enemy uh, composition, like what's being built. And um, that makes him very, very lethal when you give him resources. Oh, absolutely. I think one of the biggest things that like, kind of casual audience may not know about these kind of chaos players like DevM or Von Ivan, that's such aggressive playstyles is their knowledge is ex incredible it's extremely good um, about Co2 they know know it in and out if you, you can talk to them for literally hours and both Stormless and I have both alive in person and you know over comms on the internet we, we know these guys know this game inside and out and uh, you know the proof is in the pudding if you know the game you can really succeed at it but in this case I mean one of the things that's made Asia Mint 
so successful this year as he has been able to prove that he has an EU level understanding of this game. He sat down, by the way, and watched like 20 Brosras. This one might surprise you, Storm, was 20 Brosras. Two versus two replays. He literally copied everything he did. He wrote it down. <laughs> he learnt this game by following a very, very battle-hardened player. And that was his in a couple of years ago. Since that point, Asia Mint and also his uh, his friend Ashablar, they have done replay analysis after replay analysis after replay analysis. They have not stopped. And uh, Asia Mint's understanding is on a different level. Very, very clever guy and he knows a lot about the game. Yeah, well, uh, you're, you're seeing that displayed here as he works his way back up the map. Um, Dev M has got tier 3 already built right now, um, and he's able to call in a Panzer 4 if he wants to uh, at any second. It's unlike Dev M to not hit the right button immediately, you know, so just looking and thinking, what is, uh, what is Dev M looking for here? And there we go, Panzer 4 is actually now uh, building huge, by the way, because we've only just seen tier 2 go up for Asian Mint a few seconds ago. And I'm thinking, he's probably going to have to rush tier 4 now because of the resource drop in the game. But this cookie cutter build order, and it is indeed cookie cutter, has a slight alteration. Dev M's put a gumdrop button on the nose of the gingerbread man with his second MG, but that's it. This is tried and tested strategy Dev M is using greatly. Asia Mint's gone for something different. That's why a lot of fans will have a soft spot in their heart for him. Oh, there's a mine hit by the 2-2-2. It's going to stay alive for now. But right now, it does indeed seem like the Portuguese maestro is firmly in command. It's unfortunate that that didn't actually get the kill. Very, uh, very, very close amount of health remaining. Um, I, uh, by the way, um, an interesting point. The telemine that was detected by Asia Mint on the right-hand side. It is possible that Asia Mint thinks that is the first only teller that Devon planted in this game. Uh, if that is the case, and the minesweepers, they haven't been on the left-hand side of the map yet, so it's possible... Oh, actually, no, sorry, I'm just looking at it. He has swept it and laid a mine of his own, actually. <laughs> so, um, they did go over there, actually, at some point, I think, perhaps when they planted that mine in the scout car. Uh, so that's great, actually. Tale as old as time itself. It's uh, it's very difficult to mix the audio in a Company of Heroes game because Panzer Fours especially are one of the loudest things known to man. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> let's uh, lower the game sounds a little bit there so when Stormus is giving us one of his excellent points we can actually hear what he's saying. There we go. We are preparing, of course, for, to, for this weekend for not just this match, guys. We're having two simultaneous matches, yes, but we've got a best of five loser final later today and then tomorrow we have a best of seven grand final this is going to be one of the best weekends of company heroes competitive action you just know it and i'm sure we've got uh, so many viewers both new and old have turned out in their droves to watch what is going to be uh, two days of awesome action absolutely it's going to be one hell of a weekend very exciting weekend and i'm just looking forward for what's for what's kind of coming in the in the later stages of this um I actually, you know, we've just seen some really, really good series. The four players that are remaining are uh, just absolute legends right now. And uh, every series has the potential to go huge distance. Uh, Devon, by the way, has just dropped pack 40 and machine gun in the base. That gives him three MG, uh, sorry, MG42s uh, right now. So in terms of map control, um, it, it's going to be really hard for Asia Mint to uh, to push because he's mostly machine guns and uh, ET guns himself. Dear Relic Entertainment, on the 21st of November, one of your casters had three MG42s. One of them was clearly an MG34. I am therefore refund. <laughs> I want a refund for my. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'm, I'm reliably informed that the MG34 is, is weaker than its counterpart, and if that means anything to anyone, then, uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll try to cast it when it happens. <laughs> Fair enough, and the conscript's gone past the MG42 indeed. And it is the 34, actually, and uh, the bat Panzer IV reverses away. He's now been demolished. M4, oh, nice mine there, Dan. Good number of models killed in that one. And, and yes, you are right. The uh, the supply drop does drop the MG34, not the 42. 
which I learned is actually why some players are not using that ability and actually why they are uh, building the Pack 40 and the machine guns rather than dropping them from this commander. Yeah, it gives you a bit of resources as well. It's, it's a lot of manpower to spend, to be honest. Not You don't always have that float. But Devon being in such an imperious position, he's... Um, He's just, you know, he's got manpower to, and munitions. Look at his munitions to spare. When he gets <laughs> Mr. Schwer Gustav from the railway, uh, he's going to demolish Asia. Men. We've also had that like phase. Go on, what have you have seen? Uh, Asia Mint. He's, he's kind of like diffusing all of Devon's minds, laying his own um, <laughs> you know, there instead. But you know, what, you know what's really interesting that you can do is you can lay your own minds on top of the enemy minds without diffusing them. And then you get like double impact. Oh, 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 talking of double impact, that's a double death for the Panzer Grenadiers. Asia Mint just will not go away. Sturdy. <laughs> but um, it, we are seeing again Vermatt and able to control that central victory point, just like we saw in the um, the other match that we're watching in alternating fashion. Their match seemed to control the situation there. It may be the players. Certainly Nagano had his opportunities to get back into that one. We want to see if Asia Mint's going to have his opportunities. If he's going to, you know, capitulate and lose a few squads here and there. Or if he's going to hold strong and able to craft a way back in. Let's, let's have a look. He's certainly building the army side. Look at that. Well, I'm, I'm just waiting to see if Katusha is going to come in. He's, he can build a T-34 right now. It's not happened yet. So There it is. Uh, <laughs> just there as it you is. say okay. it, there you go. <laughs> I was thinking, is it going to happen? Oh, but it could be the next few minutes. So. could have four machine guns now. The Dushka just got taken out by the 222. And at roughly the same time as Nagano started to lose a few units and Grap started to show. And it's... Um, Oh, look at this defensive mind from Asia, and he clearly expects Devem to try and finish this game off. And, and he's right. Devem knows no other way. Once he's repaired everything, he's going to be, go, you know, gunning <laughs> for blood. Let's have a cheeky check on the stats. Dan, talk us through them. What can you see? That's fairly, fairly even game. A lot of even trades. It's, uh, it's really map control that has just been the huge thing. If you go to points held, you'll just see Devem. Uh, has had way more map control, thus he's got way more resources to spend. Um, you know, but it, it has been an interesting game because this commander, as we talked about earlier, Asia Mint's uh, defensive tactics commander allows you to kind of bring things from off map. And um, that's allowed Asia Mint to just kind of stockpile the little resources that he had, tech up over time. And uh, now we have T-34 out. And uh, this is going to be the tool that's needed to start getting back into the game. Let's see if he can do that. I mean, he's targeting the 222. Pack 40's trying to set up. Panzer Grandi is a line in wait. Oh, what a Faust from around two corners. Home in missile style. Worms arm again and eat your heart out. He needs a super sheep, does Asia Mint. Needs anything. Concrete donkey. Just to get back into this one. Oh, Devon with the bundle grenade hit. Well Asia Mint was on top of it. Well, he wasn't. He ran away from it, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. He was very, very quick. <laughs> but we do indeed... We see a strange camouflage on the T-34. He's gone for Aquamarine. I think he's trying to pretend the tank is a small pond. A duck pond. Well, there's no other explanation for it because it's a grassy map. It makes no sense whatsoever. Stark reminder that winter is coming. Ha! <laughs> Very true. Oh, Panzer Ford just goes around the corner, opens up to the M42s. That was, uh... That was unfortunate. Both of those were just completely prepped for that uh, Panzer Ford to come around the front there. I watched uh, a YouTube video by Mark Felton on um, Panzer Werfers. They're basically Nebelwerfer on track, and I'm like, oh my god, I only realised, but the sound of them is so different to the Co-1 Nebelwerfer, and the rate of fire is so much higher that, uh, but yes. Nice first salvo. Duska out of commission. Eight kills on the first shot is uh, is really cool, and then that's actually the kind of effect that you want with a unit like this. Um, Asia Min is suffering, I think, actually in manpower. He looks like he's saving up for something right now, but um, 
you know, he's, he's got to make some decisions here. Is he going to utilize this Katusha Bulletin and start oh, bringing He's used it. He's going? clicked the ability. And the first shot is going to rain hellfire from death from above. Get out of there, Regiment. Can you oh. hear the scream? Just a nice cinematic. Yeah, then, by the way, uh, Vet 2's scout car and um, the range is insane. He can actually see the T-34 repairing right now where, from where the scout car is, if you put the fog of, fog of war on. Um, that oh is why God. for reconnaissance, Vet 2 scout car is, is like an essential austere tool. You see it there. UAV is online. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get the Predator missile and the Harrier jump jets next is Dev M. His UAV's working wonders for him now, though. Stole that joke from chat earlier, but I won't give credit. I'll just use it. <laughs> Typical. As the T-34 now quite claims his 10th kill, he rolls in. There is that... Uh, ah, it's a Soviet mine, actually. Of course it is. Yep. He planted it on top. We talked about it earlier on. <laughs> yep. He's... Um... He's been doing a good job there, and uh, hopefully, you know, that might be the thing that trips trips Dev M up. Where's the Panzer worker here? Oh, there's a big clump of models on that M42. Oh, gets it again. They're never going to get any veterancy at this rate. Dev M is following an excellent Dubai numbers. Beat somebody on South Amelie Strat, but he's playing it beautifully. Yeah, and when you watch Dev M, his play is so reserved. I mean, when you look at the Panzer IV, like it's had the effect that you want from that unit just by being there. But has he really used it? Not, not particularly. Um, it's just, it's just kind of causing the AT guns to do, you know, very, very little. Um, AT guns have not been able to like go up the map. They're not using the explosive canisters against infantry. They're, um, they're very subdued. Really. It's just, just because. Panzer IV is, uh, is played very calm, very restrained. He, an Asian man has no choice now. He has no choice. He has to be aggressive and unrestrained with these T-34s. Just like Nagano in that previous game one. We're now seeing Soviets in the exact same position against this incredibly strong strategy. Um, but he just needs to throw something in the works. He needs to think outside the box, perhaps. Maybe go for a wide flank. Let's look at the tack map, Stormus, and just see it. I mean, there's opportunities for wide flanks on this map. You just can't go through the center against this. I actually thought that Asian would have the the advantage in the center with these M42 AT guns, but uh, he hasn't used it at Ooh. all. Look at that shot. Oh, he on got good Panzer reconnaissance Werfer. from the conscripts. Will he get the final blow? He needs the turret traversal. He's going to ram the Panzer Werfer. Asian Mint, you madman. Beautiful stuff. He also gets the kill on the 2-2-2. This is the madness we desired, and we're getting it with full fruition right now. Rear armor may have been penetrated, but the tank's still alive, God damn it! And he might get the killing blow. Yes, he does. Asian pulled the trigger. What a push. Wow. Unleashed God mode. Dev M not expecting that at all. These are phenomenal plays and they have come out of nowhere. I was ready to call this match a GG. Ooh. Dev M's going to be waiting to get this Panther out right now that's currently in the build, but what can be uh, sorry, recruited here by Asian Mint? This is insane. I don't know if they, they celebrate Christmas in Korea. I'm sure they do. I'm sure there's something, but he's having a party right now. There's so many gifts available to him on the map. He can just go and pick them up, but the Panthers here, they've got Ostrup and they've got Panzer Grenadiers coming out as well. Pioneers also. Asian Mint may have gotten territory, but he needs to consolidate those gains, bro. He needs to make it happen. Panther's going to push on and in. He's after the T-34. He gets it. It's very, all very well breaking through enemy lines, Dan, but you have to consolidate your position. And here we go. It's going to come from the sky above once more. Has he seen it? Oh, no. The ominous whistle. Seven tons shells falling. He planned it, by the way, for the treat path there. First shot on target every time. And Asian Mint has thwarted him by standing still. <laughs> Literally. He stood still by, I don't know, by accident or by design. It may be a double bluff, but... Unless well, the third the, shell. The, the M42 uh, AT gun was there at the time. I think that's where he dropped it on uh, the, oh, okay. the double ATs. But um, 
Yeah, actually, um, you just see here Devem on the right-hand side. I think he's so close to spotting the mines being laid up there, but it actually doesn't have the vision range. If you put Fog of War on for Devem, you'll see it's like suddenly it doesn't look so good uh, anymore. There's uh, another T-34 being churned out for Asian. And uh, that, that, just to recap, just phenomenal. This is why we love casting this game, is when players can do things like that. That's the reason why Asian is here in this series right now. And uh, with 78 VPs against 432, it's only now starting to heat up. Oh, yes. Well, it, I can smell it's cooking. And I'm hungry for more Asian. Please keep it coming. That was fantastic. And um, you've got to say, Stormless, that uh, he has a tough battle ahead of him. But um, we're ready. We're ready. If he can make this happen, this would be a fantastic game one of his series today. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, t t tough battle, maybe, but I'm just looking at DevM right now. There's no AT. The, the infantry are, you know, okay, they're, they're good, but they can be routed quite easily. And there's just a panther versus a T-34 and two AT guns. I'd say that DevM is like, he's got to be aggressive here to be defensive. Um, he can't uh, can't concede territory. <gasps> Ostrup and I, and I think the way he got careless, the main way he got careless today was using munitions on the uh, Schwer good stuff instead of continuing to plant mines. He just thought he had the game and he didn't. He didn't, and because he started to willy-nilly expend on huge railway artillery, you know, it's it's just classic um, German Wunderwaffe thinking. It, you know, you want to do the tried and tested methodology of warfare. Don't build a huge death cannon. It just doesn't work, Germany. <laughs> Well, I mean, speaking of that, DevM's choice right now is to go for another Panzerwerfer. Um, I don't know how I feel about this, actually, because the Panther is not backed up by anything right now. There is uh, a need for AT, I think, which is um, which is not being fielded. Famous uh, top level, top 20 player Orange Pest says uh, Soviet late game is kicking in and very much. The reasons the Soviets are so good in the late game is with tier 4, everything's just that little bit more. The uh, conscripts are 7 man and easier to reinforce, etc. And um, your economy just really kicks in against not definitely OKW, but even Wehrmacht with their bonuses mm. with tier 4. You just outcompete them. And Asiament has gotten there, but can he stay there? With only 78 victory points, he can only afford a few slip-ups before he's out of the game. Yep, yep absolutely. And uh, great first uh, first shot from the new Panzerwerfer, which removes one of the uh, Dushkas. There is another T-34 that's just arrived from the north for Asiament. And uh, VPs are stalled at the moment. It's all about this VP in the center. Um, I just want to say that uh, I just saw Von Ivan poke up in chat and say <laughs> GG, like, <laughs> you know, like, how well played. I just think that, that was very Von Ivan-esque, you know, that uh, incredible, uh, incredible push there. Certainly was. MG's been flanked in the west. Devem's showing a few signs of faltering a little bit here. He has been known, by the way, it, in previous tournaments when he wasn't as well practiced, to certainly throw the lead at times. Um, it has happened, but I, I would just say this is all Asian, baby. I, I take no credit away from the man. He's played fantastically to get back into this. T-34 pushes in, Panther reverses away, and he's holding the line. And this is very reminiscent, of course, some of the big battles of the Second World War. The Germans waiting for Panthers and then coming up against deep defense, deep battle Soviet lines of, of massed forces. And uh, that's exactly what we're seeing as a microcosm in this game, so say what you will about the realism of uh, Relic Entertainment's Company of Heroes 2, but at times <laughs> it's like poetry. Yeah. Uh, th this is the makings of a, a really, really good uh, opening game for the series. Um, d d you know, looking at both players right now, huge amounts of veterans here and everything, notably two engineers at Vet 3 for Asia Mint, so the repairs on the T-34s uh, are speedy. Excellent fire from the uh, Panzerwerf there, wipes the Dushka again, this time taking down the uh, the Dushka itself. It cannot be recruited now, forcing that respend from Asiament if he wants another machine gun on the field. 
Cross troop and push in with the LMGs. MG42 battering the same squad. Meanwhile, T34 is going to come to try and rescue the situation. Doesn't want to lose any more of these 69 victory points. Nice flank by the T34. That's a vet 3 MG. That Panther's got to be so careful the moment it moves just in front of the shed as the, as the line of sight blocker. It's uh, hit by the M42. The M42 is moving into the uh, into the range of the of the Gustav cannon. Just pyrotechnics though. That's all it is right now. And look at this, by the way, everybody. The Panzerwerfer is in a very ominous position. Very ominous. <laughs> is this what's been happening? <laughs> I'd nope out of there. I'd, I'd shoot myself in the foot and just try and get on leave at that point. When you're next to the skeleton. Oh, we just had. Oh, that's unfortunate. The spread there. M42 gets taken out. Yeah, and you had a full squad of conscripts in the centre get hit by it as well. So the, the, oh, the crap! Desperate... I did not see that. Fair enough. Too busy yeah, focused I mean, on the Panzerwerfer. It is desperation. I mean, actually, Asian Mint is in. Oh, actually, what really a good... shot! That was not desperation. That was an assassination on retreat of that squad. So an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. It's all getting biblical here on Amelie Fields. One squad dies and another one falls. Wow, I mean, uh, DevM is trying to uh, dominate this game with vehicles. <laughs> Dan, he's the going in for the Panzerwerfer again. He's going in for it again. Oh, he misses this time. Panther's ready. Panther's ready. Lacti like a linebacker, just trying to protect his quarterback. I'm not the sure they're not. The <laughs> range is, is just so deadly for the Panther. By the way, Panzerwerfer is in range of the M42, but it's going to have to get out of there because of a close range shot. That is really, really good timing from Asia Mint to avoid that. What a game. What an amazing game this is. It really is. 69. Victory points for Asian Mint versus DevM on 382 right now and dropping very slowly. But just like a wounded animal in the Serengeti, it will bleed out in time. And Asian Mint stalking him. He's biding said time right now. Panther's just been hit. Rear armor penetrated. Oh, the T-34s. They want action. Us trooping down. I tell you what, Asian could push in here. He really could. We've got a stricken Panzerwerfer. Yes, he is. Stormless call it. He's hitting the trigger yet again, possibly. Yeah, this is the, the right decision. He knows that Panther's on low health. He just has to get vision for the M42 to start picking off the other tanks. He could ground attack through the fog of war here, roughly to where the Panzer IV is. But um, this aggression right now is key from Asian because he has lost a lot of his army and he's just trying to. Um, Give that kind of impact, the same impact you see when zebras get together in a herd, uh, in a herd, you know, and they they look like a rock to enemy tigers. That's exactly what he's trying to do right now. And just keep pushing Devon back into the base. He just play. saw the Panzer IV survive. The Panzer Werfer goes forward. He needs to be defensive. Panther's now backing up into the tree line. Panzer Werfer's misclicked a little bit. He has to back away. Asia Mint's knocking at the door. Like he wants it. Panzer. We've got the MG42 being pushed away here. Panzerwerfer has been able to get a volley off. Let's see what happens. Oh, nice dodging there somehow by the M42. Still alive. But just look at that tacticular map. He's got a control. He's got a death ball. Starcraft style in the center. It's so good. Uh, just look, look at the repair times that he's got right now on these T-34s. They can dive in like that. Take 75% health loss, repair so quickly on the front lines and just get straight back into the action. You look at DevM, he's struggling to get that Panther back up to full health. And soon there's going to be three T-34s backed up by two M42 AT guns. DevM doesn't have the composition to handle Not this. just it's that! All about aggression. Not just that! He's going to back them up with an SU-85. He's just clicked it. What a beautiful decision. The T-34s are going to be protected by the long-range tank destroyer with the 85 mil cannon. Oh my, this is a brilliant build order by Asian Man. I, we said this at the start. He had to show excellent perseverance and preservation in order to survive and he's done just that. Panther goes forward could get the killing shot here but DevM's gun shy. Doesn't want it anymore Yes, so was that a rare bounce on a T-34? It might have been. Either way they're still alive. It was a penetration but just about and assassinates him from afar. He needs more of that Yep 
DevM has a lot of time right now with 340 VPs. Asia Mint hasn't applied the triple cap pressure by capping the VP on the left. So if DevM plays cool and calm, he, he can, you know, completely thwart this attack and, and what is lying outside of his base. But he's got to be careful of, of these T-34s. <laughs> <laughs> Panzer <Panzerwerfer>. Werfer! <laughs> what is it doing? Reversed into combat yet again. Stay down, Mr. President! Stay down! <laughs> No! <laughs> I don't know. I keep seeing it come in from the right of my screen backwards normally and then <laughs> in. But Devon's played amazingly, but he's a very much a form player and having this thing, Asia Mint, survive against your onslaught is unsettling. You're like, who am I in here with? Oh, oh my word. Look at the SU-85 here. And uh, bear in mind, with Focus Sight, it's feeding vision to the T-34s right now safely. And uh, there's no chance of a flank, really, whilst the, uh, the SU-85 is protected by the T-34s. DevM's going for another Panzer IV. I think he's just looking for a, a, a medium vehicle flank. That's, that's a good idea, to be fair to him. Just, uh, again, look at the Focus Sight vision there. Dev, um, uh, sorry for Asia Mint. He's just following these units back to the base. <laughs> he is. He's hunting them down. What's going on with this left VP though? This is this is tragic. There's a T34 there that could actually go over and capture it <laughs> with the capture points ability. Um, but he's, he's got him. He's got him in a GG position now. His build order is is possibly superior. I mean, the Panther is veteran C2, yes, but with no vetted packs on the field. Oh, what a shot from a four! Focus fire! Fire, that was awesome by the SU-85. A, by the way, anti-tank Overwatch is just ready for Asia Mint. If he can use focus sight from the uh, SU-85, I think he could just wipe these tanks from the game right here. It's... I'm waiting to see if that's what he's planning possibly escape to the base sector if he did that. Um... Oh, what oh, another oh. shot by the SU-85! This thing is all killer, no filler, and every shot is an execution for DevM right now. What a unit, and what use of said unit by Asiamans. However, as had its engine damaged, DevM's going to go in with a vanilla Panzer IV. Misses, hits the shed. <laughs> He's looking for it. He just wants to kill the SU-85 now, but... Oh dear, what another shot there. Oh, damn, like he's cr crushing the uh, conscripts as they lie on the ground. And here it is. Anti-tank overwatch, that artillery. He has to keep on the move, does DevM. He has to move and fire. So difficult in a tank. However, he is able to kill the SU-85. However, his Panther Veteran C3 dies, exposing that rear armor. Panzer IV looks likely to survive the assault. No. Conscripts with the 18A damaging the engine further. T-34s march in. This is the death of DevM's army. 1-0 to Asia Mint beckons nigh. 250 victory points. Yes. But he's in an unconquerable position right now. There it is. DevM calls GG. And uh, wow, what a fantastic game. Turned around at the last minute. Totally unexpected, but uh, Asia Mint taking 1-0 in the series. GG. And that was just game one. <laughs> that was just game one. But uh, there you go. Let's update our uh, miniature brackets here live on your screen. As you can see that um, we do now have Isilda and Asiamans 1-0 up each. Wow. We need a break, mate. We need a break. I'm pretty sure Escape. the next game's probably starting. But, we, you know, that was... Uh, that was tremendous, really was. Yeah, uh, we, we, we've, we've been treated actually because um, we have a lot of games to go today. And, um, you know, the, this, it's why we watch Company of Heroes because it's, it's just beautiful when, when you see that kind of thing happening. Like, I, think, I think maybe we, uh, we, we, we perhaps um, 
gave him too much strategic credit for well, he may have been throwing the game at that point you know, like by doing the dive but but i mean it's just beautiful really to see like how he handled it how he recovered it how he dominated from that point onwards um you know this is exactly what we're expecting from this stage of the tournament is games like this is the players to be just like at each other's throats oh, constantly yes. neck and neck um phenomenal game phenomenal game really um and if I can, A, you know, sorry to talk for ages, um, you know, like one of the cool things that, you know, we saw, for instance, like Love Nest and, and some other players were playing with this defensive tactics commander. And, um, you know, that that has just allowed uh, Asia Mint, who didn't have a great early game at all. I will say that it wasn't strong early game whatsoever, um, you know, but it allowed him to survive. You know, it's a commander that that is there to kind of counter the Ostrupen. It works and it allowed him to get into that late game swing and just play uh, phenomenally. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm so glad that we got to, to see that. Um, yeah, I think fantastic. I think he's up against a build order that's so strong, you know. It's a ridiculous build order. Um, is this Ostrupen kind of style with the vehicles out at specific points, etc. cetera. Um, it is it is truly very difficult to come up against. So Asia Mint's start is not necessarily indicative of his style, you know. Maybe, uh, but he goes up against DevM as well. Dan, a great, you know, early starter also. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. If you guys want to see the live scores of the brackets, uh, go on over to uh, the exclamation mark brackets. You can see that there's one nil in both series. We're waiting for game two of Nagano Asilda. Um, you you may know that uh, Asia Mint, of course, is playing in Korea. I'm sure he's timed his body clock for this tournament, though. Um, <laughs> I mean, you would do, wouldn't you, for 10 grand? I certainly would. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What well, Sicky's invented for, isn't it? No, we're not condoning that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that that's, I mean, that's, it's, uh, it's a difficult thing when you're hosting a global tournament to make it uh fair for everyone uh, hopefully you know these players are taking the tournament seriously i think that's clear players have been studying they've been scrimming uh they've been keeping cards close to their chest so hopefully they're also taking care of their health sleeping early <laughs> you know getting everything prepared that they need to um but uh yeah i mean you know this is uh this is just normal i think let's uh, um, let's watch that uh that dive again shall we Still, still, of course. Well, it's game two now. I do need to change that, but uh, let's just listen along. Here we go. The advantage in the center with these M4280 guns, but uh, he hasn't used it at <gasps> all. Look at that shot. Oh, he On got good reconnaissance over. from the conscripts. Will he get the final blow? He needs the turret traversal. He's gonna ram the Panzerwerfer. Asia Mint, you madman. Beautiful stuff. He also gets the kill on the 2-2-2. This is the madness we desired, and we're getting it with full fruition right now. Rear armor may have been penetrated, but the tank's still alive, God damn it! And he might get the killing blow. Yes, he does. Asia Mint pulled the trigger. The advantage in the sense the... That was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> the storm was, I'm so sorry, mate. I always speak for just slightly long, so the the uh, bloody transitions. You always come away and with it. We do a one-two punch, Stormless and I. We're a casting team, so we very early on, we figured out that I say something crazy. Stormless comes in with something equally crazy, but maybe a little bit more kind of human sounding. And then I come in, and then it's like a one-two system. But on the Twitch clips... <laughs> It's really brutal to Stormless. It's really unfortunate. He always says really good stuff. It's just... It's always like, well, A, end of video. I'm so sorry. Mate. What was great about that, A, was end of video. And if you look over here, end of video. I, I'm, I'm used to it. I'm used to it. It's brutal, though. I'm so glad in GCS2 when um, I, it was tightrope casting with you and he was doing more analysts. And you finally got one of the greatest casting calls in history. Did you see that? <laughs> that was with Momo. That was. Was with it with Momo? Momo? What did you? What yeah. was it? Sorry. Did you? Can? Did you no, see it was, that? It was. It was. It was, it was cool. railway uh, artillery with the Sturmovic air support, and uh, it was the end of the game anyway. But it was just incredible because the the railway artillery would have killed 
um i can't remember what unit it was on the center vp but the, the stern of a plane flew in timing <laughs> it took the railway artillery shell survived um so the explosion happened in like in air and then flew off saving the unit underneath no stern panther will find your link um uh, and post it in chat for us um guys we, we're just we're the next game starts in exactly four minutes i'm gonna get good old mr stormless into a lobby and uh, we are then going to go live. We can have a little break there just to rest our larynxes, etc. And get some water on board. So we will be straight back live into game two of the first series today, the upper bracket final. So thank you.
tale as old as time. It's plain to see the matter's not leaving. It's Ostrupen. Uh, that was meant to be Beauty and the Beast, but it is indeed Ostrupen once again. We can count on them every single game, it seems. By the way, there's announcements about that in an hour's time, so stick around after this game. Uh, hint, it's going to be pretty hype. Um, but we have indeed got Nagano, who is nil one down, Stormless. He's nil one down in one of the biggest cash tournaments of all time. Nagano could be heading to the loser bracket final later on in a best of five. Who's the guy that lo is looking imperious right now? Uh, well, in the north and uh, playing as the USF, it is Isildur. I was, I was trying to think of a, a melody for him and all I could think of was the Final Fantasy VII Sephiroth theme, theme tune with USF in place oh of Sephiroth. God. But uh, no, we were not going to. I didn't want to sing that. Nay, you're a braver man than I. <laughs> I'm a braver man, and I, you know, I got the, I got the stage fright, and I, I ruined it all. I think we should just restart the tournaments at this point, to be honest. Well, indeed, we have a soldier locking in mechanized. This is again Razor Edge Meta, the only guy not to use the these kind of this setup today is indeed mm. uh, the champion of our hearts, the people's champion. It's indeed Asia Mint in that previous game we just watched. What a game that was, and what a comeback. Showing that if you think outside the box, sometimes you uh, you reap the rewards. Yeah, he, he has to be sure not to get too ahead of himself, though, for the next game. I'm sure he's going to be pretty happy being 2-1 up. Uh, sorry, 1-0 up in that series, but, uh, you know, it's... Uh, you have to keep you have to keep calm when that kind of game happens. <laughs> Never get uh, on top of you, but um, yeah, we saw a fantastic game by Isildur uh, in the previous match between these two players. And uh, just to point out, by the way, in the last game, Nagano was using the the alias uh, Nico. Uh, it is as it should be right now, Nagano. I can assure you, it is the same player. Everything neat and tidy is how we like it. So, uh, Mr. Stern Panther has given the orders. And we've got the players playing as their correct names. I think that's actually right in one of the biggest tournaments ever. The players don't just make up a name on the day, you know. We are losing the <laughs> yeah. yeah. Famously in StarCraft, uh, that famous Ukrainian player played as a sponsored name instead. What was his name? You know. Oh, I don't. Somebody in chat will correct me there, but uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, literally just rocked up as the sponsor's name from the tournament. So they had no rules preventing it. <laughs> Here's the uh, WC-51, by the way, from Isildur, straight away going into the uh, Browning M2 machine gun. And uh, that is the unit that uh, Isildur is going to be using to, to push Nagano around right now. That's uh, a pretty key unit before Fausts uh, are available from teching. Then the WC-51 wants to push all these units out of cover. Wants to uh, get on top of them with the machine gun. Oh, talking of machine As soon as you said machine gun, Dan, the machine gun came out of the top of the building. That's incredible timing by yourself. Why are you the best in the business? You'll be here all day. Yeah. Have no have no choice. Do we see five one backs <laughs> away? MG in good position right now, keeping the cutoff, were the pioneer. From this early game onslaught by Isilda. Just notice early game onslaught by Isilda. This guy, he he is the difference. Um, earlier in game one of this series, Asilda was the Southern Fairmatch player, and he was up in this camera angle, this camera angle. Notice, we're already down here. That is why I urge you, urge you all, don't just blame balance. Don't just hope to be good at this game. You have to analyze it and break it apart and rebuild it in your own brain. And that is why Asilda's so damn good. He's done just that, and um, he's looking damn good this tournament. The lieutenant has been assigned to field ops. Yeah, I, th I think in the previous game, the uh, WC-51 was a bit later than this, if I, if I recall correctly. So it didn't have this kind of impact. Um, the impact needed. Isildo was able to bring out his scout car at like 4 minutes, like 18 or something like that, which was uh, very, very quick. You can see Nagano's a bit later than that. So there's already this sense of uh, the efficiency for Isildur is just it's just extreme. It's, it's the next level. And Nagano's kind of playing catch up to that efficiency I feel um, but uh, Company of Heroes 2 is not just a game about how efficiently you play it it's also about the the build order it's also about the counter builds um, you know it's yeah. uh, 
It's about the mines. There's a lot going on. The build order is your structure, isn't it? It's all about how you play around with that structure. But if you don't have good structure or good strategic form, you're not going to be able to, to get, get very far. In this case, both players have chosen excellent structures and forms. Not very um, exciting in the strategic sense, but it's all about the tactics now. It's all about how they use it. And in this case, Nagano's gone forward with his 2 2 2 forcing the rifleman and the rear echelons out of position. This is the ebb and flow of battle. And very soon, we're going to have a huge riptide in the favor of Isilda when that Stuart hits the field. Yeah, I feel like Nagano should be spending this time. He should be looking at the clock and thinking, okay, Stuart's going to hit soon. You know, it's, there's been enough map control for it. Where's the teller? I haven't seen a teller yet. I will just check uh, to see if anything has been played. But no, no teller mine at the moment. Um, so what is he going to be relying on to deal with the Stuart when it does come out? Well, you can tell that, speaking of tell, you can tell that he's got a lot of munitions in the bag, so he could actually go for a, you know, Panzer Shrek, should he want them. But there's no other better use than uh, Talamites. Could be two down at this point in time, Virgin on three. But Nagano has come back with uh, furious vengeance and anger upon his soldier. He's playing really well now. Oh, this is bad for Nagano, though. Scout car horrendously out of position against the Stuart. Mark Target is still on from the WC-51. Is there a shot blocker in the car? Yes, there is! Oh, yes, that it ricochets planned. against the bonnet. Rear echelons give chase, though. Just feigning a bazooka they do not have, but the 222 doesn't want any of it. He's now marooned, trying to get around the log pile, doing a 360 maneuver in the heat of battle. WC-51's going in again, possibly to tag him and light him up, but he has gotten out of there using the side roads. <laughs> now the Faust is on, the Faust is on the off now because of the tier two tech, so there it goes. Scout car is gonna get away with that. That's well played to keep that uh, crucial unit alive. Pro tip for um, new players in chat, chat. Less is more when delicately microing your vehicles. Stuart's going in, Ostrupen are going to be very much less than more when the Stuarts finish with them. Oh, that was dead. way too risky from Nagano. He was waiting for the Faust recharge to try and get the WC-51, but the uh, unit was very overextended on its own, and uh, unfortunately that, that was a waste. Yeah, the, sorry, the, just the tip for newer players. We will have newer players in the stream today. If you want a micro vehicle in a tense situation, just slow, slow down, less clicks, trust in your vehicle's movement, and... Uh, a little bit of luck along the way. <laughs> but do not spam clicks and think that you can influence it. You just... Well, you can't influence it, but you have to do it in a cold, calm, calculated method. Talking about those adjectives, the Stuarts inhibiting them again. Panzer Grenadiers could have been taken out there, but they were fortuitous on retreat. This, this is neck and neck. I know the victory points are in Nagano's favor, but it really does feel that. Shall we check out the stats, Dan? What do we see on the stats? Uh, stats at the moment are uh, actually looking pretty good for Isildur. A lot of the games we cast were, where we see this matchup, a bit, actually more even than this, I would say. But uh, it's very, very early game at the moment, if, to be honest, to, to see anything meaningful here. Um, but, um, yeah. yeah, I think actually the most interesting thing in the graphs is just the points held. You can just yeah, see Nagano definitely. has the, the resource lead. Yeah, invest in Nagano, or invest when a silver when he's low and reap the, uh, the rewards. <laughs> Buy low, sell high. Back 40 in position as the 2-2-2 two, two, two is Runareki as usual. We have had four games in a row on Amelie Fields. It is, um... Oshupan on the right, by the way. Oh, just as you say it, one of them gets shot in the back. This poor guy, he's seen some serious stuff. Keeping it uh, PG-13 on Relic Stream, of course. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. Do you know, I don't, I don't know what it is about this match in specific, but the uh, the infantry voice lines that have been triggering have uh, have been beautiful. And I actually, it's, give us an accurate I don't, representation. I know it's a of what weird heard, thing please. to say, but it's it's been stand out to me. I've heard the Ostrup and uh, like. You know, like, this is brilliant! The enemy's finally fighting back! <laughs> and then, you know, when, like, when the flamethrowers are coming in, like, you're hearing the US symmetry call. I, I don't know, maybe it's just me. But, uh... No, no, no. There's all, Everybody always remarks upon that. You can play this game for 7,000 hours or 7 years and you're still hearing new voice lines. That's what I find. Hello. Panzer. 
Sorry, the MG42 sets up in the centre. Riflemen are thwarted for the time being, and Panzergrenade is in the threat of the bundle, forcing the retreat. And there it is. A little bit slow by Silder, it must be said. But Nagano is really starting to settle down now. He's finding his rhythm. We're not seeing any of those jitters that we saw from game one. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. We saw him around 20 minute not mark, yet. didn't we? I love this, by the way, WC-51. It's constant mark target, and then it's just trying to threaten the scout car, trying to, like, just penetrate with the with the M2 machine gun. And um, I think that's cool. I think it's good that, you know, Isildur is one of these players that every moment of the game, he's looking to just capitalize on small things, small things that will stack up over time. You know, a little bit of health damage or even putting mark target on that vehicle it may serve him very well. Uh, you know, with a, with a potential push from the Stuart or even an AT grenade, bazooka from the lieutenant. It's, it's, it's so important. And Isildur is uh, one of those players who's just making use of, of everything at every moment. Uh, interesting weapon racks are uh, about to pop in the USF base. So we will be seeing uh, bars soon on these riflemen. Riflemen pushing up on the western side, lieutenant leading the fray. Elsewhere, rear echelons tangoing, but importantly with Stuart helping along the way. WC-51 hears the cry. Sildur's starting to work his way back into the situation. Very methodical in his approach. I would say, uh, as he should be, to be honest, because um, when I look at Nagano's composition, I think Sildur has the, the better army on the field at the moment. Um... We yet to see. I mean, Nagano currently 400 uh, manpower. Not really spending that right now. He has teched up to battle phase two, so uh, we're likely to see tier three unit. Yeah, as soon as you mentioned his manpower, he used it. Third off stripping <laughs> to replace his losses. We saw that one got shot oh. cruelly on retreat earlier on. Sentry rounds from the MG, forcing away the lieutenant. And yes, Isilda has, as I say, worked his way back into this and gained a triple cap. Off the back of not just the Stuart, but the Browning 50 cal, really helping out the situation. By the way, there's, uh, this is cool, by the way. Pack 40, ground attacking the uh, hay bales where the uh, infantry are taking cover. You can you can see there, you're just trying to remove these cover positions. You see it now. So and, he doesn't uh, have any food in the winter. It makes perfect sense. You know, he can't feed his cattle. Um, just attacking <laughs> the agriculture of Isildur, you have very good point stormers. If you look on the left hand side of the map, just south of the VPs, you see the effect. Oh this, gosh! Uh, the poor cows are dying. We need cow skins, Relic. If you're listening to us, we don't want whales and dolphins. Save... Cows. <laughs> Save, <yeah. laughs> it's cruelty and warfare. Side Tier 3 off. coming up now for uh, Nagano, and um, he's, he's close to the fuel, he needs to get the, the Panzer IV out, timing isn't going to be bad, it's, it's average I would say, and actually at this stage of the tournament, I don't think you can be playing average, you've got to be like ahead in timings, you've got to be like better than your opponent at this stage, uh, Nagano's going for double fuel right now, and yes. uh, Silder is stretched. He is, um, but we, we're seeing that a lot in this game. This one seems a, a little bit more like both players are fully warmed up and ready. Feels like we're in for a long haul here, and that's why we've deliberately uh, lowered our tone and emotion. Because Stormless and I can sense when uh, we we're in for the long haul with two players. Because these, mm. we've seen ebb and flow already. Uh, you know, forwards and backwards, the battle lines have been drawn, redrawn, erased, and drawn again. <laughs> Are securing our territory. Yeah, the, um, the lull here is, uh, you know, because it, it does, you know, provided that the um, the unit retention is good enough, then both players will come to, I think, this natural standoff at this point. And uh, actually, that we're just looking for the next window, the next window that a unit will have to be dominant. That is right now. That's the Panzer IV, which is now on the field. And um, Nagano has a, a really good opportunity here because there just there isn't enough AT on the field. I feel from uh, Isildur right now, he hasn't gone for uh, for an AT gun. Uh, he's just got the bazooka, and that really, I mean, that is it at the moment. 
for those of you that don't know how the brackets work today, the loser of this series will go down to the lower bracket. Both, neither of these players have lost a full series in this tournament thus far. They have still their life remaining, their extra life remaining. And um, in the lower bracket, as we know, Asia Mint is 1-0 up against Devim. Devem right now. Of four and two, 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 comrades in arms. With now the pack forty joining the battle. The enemy is one of our been marked for targeting. The the marked target's great. To, to have the WC fifty one on the field still right now is so important because it's it's the recon source for uh, for a seal door. So that plane is going to be giving recon as it's flying around, and it's like a. It's almost like a little hint that okay, a Sildor is looking for the next the next avenue of attack. Uh, of course, it does have the the major now, so we can get recon from the the major should the WC51 go down. But up to that point, the WC51 is important. It's good to see a player treat it with respect because it still has late game potential. It's there's so many sports where for whatever reason, the players give themselves a, a lot of respect, almost too much respect. After the initial sort of skirmishes have happened, in the middle phase, you often get this kind of winding down before the final assault. And many sports this happens in. It happens in football, it happens probably even in snooker. Anything you want to mention, it is, but it's a known phenomenon. And we're seeing it right here, but stuff like the Major being assassinated by the Coaxial, or possibly Pintle Mount Gunner of the uh, Panzer IV there. That's the kind of thing that will, um, you know, spark us back into action once more. I, suppose we I, I, I think it's a shame to see the Major go down. There's a lot of players kind of throwing it into the fray on its own. It, it, it's essential. Like, it's got recon, it's got decoy barrages, which are just invaluable against uh, MG42 positions, right? And then obviously actual artillery. Um, you know, people need to be uh, thinking about the utilities of these units. Um, so it's a shame to see the, the Major go down there. Rifleman getting manhandled there and forced away. We do have our first Sherman as referenced by Storm 76 mil. Beautiful camouflage. Not so sure it's appropriate attire. Looks like a, pan, uh, a paratrooper has draped his uh, canopy over him. <laughs> the capture point is under attack. Panzer is Sherman could go for a little bit of a crush here. And Panzer Grenadiers know it. Very lucky to sustain it. Literally no health damage there. Ooh, this S mine could be detonated by the Stuart on retreat, hurting the Austrian. Doesn't see the opportunity, but for a good reason, because he was uh, in an ambush situation. These are uh, echelons, by the way, the deceptive. They do have the minesweeper icon, but there is, in fact, two bazookas on there. They actually just fall foul of a shot from the Panzer IV, wiping uh, three models from the squad with the help from the Pintle MG. Prioritize right, vehicle for a moment. Gets uh, WC51 constantly marking his target. It's a Swiss army knife of abilities. Get the WC51 this Christmas. Not only does it have hold fire, handbrake mode, vehicle crew disembark, mark target, but it also has 155mm artillery barrage. Step on it, and a Pintle Mount Browning can be yours today if you purchase now. But wait, there's more. <laughs> there's more. <laughs> You can decrew this vehicle and recrew it with all of your favorite models that you previously purchased in the last edition of this game. For only two ninety nine. <laughs> oh, riflemen, oh. they're not gonna be able to recrew anything. <laughs> They've been silenced. Oh man, you can't be losing squads like that. That was uh, horrendous. The AoE for uh, Panzer IV is is brutal and you just cannot get trapped in green cover positions that way. Uh, I love that uh, Nagano is just still applying really, really good pressure here. He's just making it very difficult for Isildur. And I think the key thing is stopping Isildur from getting any flanking avenues. Um, you have the scout card, Veteran C2, the sight range again is huge. We know exactly where Isildur is at any moment. So um, this is looking like a, a confident access game. Damaged engine on the Sherman there. Panzer IV pushes in, Stuart backs away, Bazooka fire reigns in from the rear echelons. But Asildo having made a dodgy mistake there, looks like he's up against it. 
Needs a little bit of Asian Mint style magic in order to gain a, a, a breaking of the defensive structure that is Nagano Citadel. Needs that Urukai with the bombs on it. Do you remember from uh, the Twin Tower? The, the, the sorry, Berserk. The Berserker, berserk, yes, that's yes, it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just runs in like a Madden. Just like, I, I wouldn't want to see that in this game. <laughs> Why not? That'd be cool. <laughs> with the white hand of Saruman <laughs> on him. We are, of course, using uh, Lord of the Rings references today because Asilda is named after the King of the First Men, um, who famously came to temptation, much to the disgust of Alrond, and uh, took the ring for himself. He's a naughty, naughty boy. Oh, nice little uh, poke in here. The Ostrupen have been surrounded very much so by three vehicles there and somehow are untouched. They targeted this uh, inert map object instead, it seems. I'm just trying to look out for any sign of mines on the right-hand side. Gano really doesn't seem to be using mines at all at the moment. Um, something which we know is kind of like essential. You saw a sealed or poking his head onto the right-hand side of the map there, perhaps looking for a, a flank on that side. Yeah, don't tell your local uh, children, but this game is more like Minecraft than Minecraft itself. It's literally the craft of planting as many mines uh, as you can. And uh, I'm not even joking, I'm just trying to be funny. A mines win games is a common, common mantra in our community, yeah. and it's been that way for over a decade. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um... <laughs> <laughs> I know you're laughing at that. I just saw that comment in chat, yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, somebody can't tell their local children due to restrictions placed upon them, apparently. I mean, I'm not... I'm just quoting here, but anyway. Less said the better about that. Panzer IV goes forward and um, 50 cal under duress. Yeah, you know, just like we saw in the previous game we cast, there's a, a really strong lead in VPs right now for Nagano. Um, he's, you know, he's always really held two VPs in this game. And uh, we're, we're going to start getting to that point soon where Sildor's thinking, okay, I, I have to dive on VPs, otherwise I'm not going to have time oh! to... Dive on VPs? How about diving in on that uh, Stuart there with double packs, taking him by surprise, and us as casters as by surprise. Good work by Nagano there, creeping up through the bushes to assassinate his foe. You know, I'm just thinking that uh, if, and it is an if, Isildur conceded this game, it would be the first game in the tournament he's lost so far. Oh, really? Is he unbeaten even in games? I believe he's unbeaten. He hasn't dropped a single game so far. Nagano's dropped uh, one, now two, with the, the first game in this series. Uh, but I don't think Isildur has dropped a sil uh, single game. What a, what a beast. That shows you Nagano's on form. Of course, the runner-up of the 2019 World Championships, only getting four thousand five hundred dollars from that tournament. Poor him. <laughs> <laughs> four thousand five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> what a schmuck! Absolutely. Well, he's going to be fighting for a, a bit more than that now. Um, we said earlier, everybody in the tournament at the moment still has a chance to be in the grand finals. It's possible. So um, that's why the players are playing so hard. That's why I sealed her right now, instead of, uh... Yeah, instead, instead of, of losing his Sherman alive, he's losing <laughs> his Sherman. Well, just about, it had three penetrations there, but the last of the four shots by the Pat 40s hit the trees. Um, unfortunate there for Nagano, but well reacted to by Isilda in the end. The, the, the pressure from Nagano has been very, uh, very good here, just, again... He's uh, starting to put S mine fields, I think, all over, just trying to stop the uh, from coming back in. WC51 spotted that low. Um, I mean, he's not making the same mistake as DevM and just using the uh, artillery over and over. Just had, by the way, combined arms cooldown for that rate of fire, on the move accuracy, etc. Um, he's just using whatever he can. That shows a little bit of desperation for my money. Mm. Yeah, the, the win, really, you need to use that on push, not uh, defensively. <laughs> no, no, just scout, scout cars in oh, problem. Oh, what though. a shot, though! That's with uh, not even using take aim, just the fire uh, sabot rounds. Yeah, well, well, 
well played there. And, and very, very important pick up there because that's a huge recon tool for Nagano down now, which means Isildur can start flanking. Um, he, you know, WC51 sight range is not, well, it's not near as good really as the, the scout car. However, um, Isildur now is going to start being able to pop smoke, drive around the back of his opponent and, and um, you know, and cause chaos. And, uh, if we're judging this game, anything like we, we cast the last game, we could be in for another, <laughs> we could be in for another repeat of game one from the Dev and Asia Mint series. Yeah, this has been a real slow one this time, but uh, Nagano's played very well and valiantly, and he's going to take it to a deciding ace game. And this is timing itself beautifully, these alternating games. We're going to have a deciding ace game to follow, and all the players are going to be rested and ready for the best of five final that follows later on today in the loser bracket, their last chance to compete in the grand final. 66 victory points taking down Isildur's pushing him. Somebody says, does he need to be near vehicles to make use of combined arms? Of course he does. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why it was even worse uh, use of the ability. Let's have the Sherman. He could be near should he want to use it again. But he has, no longer has any munitions. So that's not going to be helpful. chance to uh, regain our breath, isn't it, Stormus? And our endurance after that incredible game one of the Asia Mint Dev M series, which was probably uh, a contender for game of the tournament. Mm. Dev M. Yeah. Losing this I mean... time of the other contender, he obviously won, didn't he, versus Witness. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, speaking it's... of railway, sorry, just I keep interrupting you. But uh, go on, what were you going to say? No, nothing. I think we should focus on this railway artillery, even though it's... Uh, and the push, not. but the absolutely cancelled push, because the Sildas dropped out of the game, everybody. That was a quick game, too. We're heading to a deciding ace game between the upper bracket finalists, the Silda and Nagano. Nagano seemed to be gone, but he certainly wasn't forgotten, and he took it straight back to a Silda. And there we are, as we are um, soon to be heading back to the lower bracket pre-final, or the semi-final, what are you going to call it? It's the final before the final on the lower bracket. Uh, we do see that we will be heading to the deciding ace game map, which is uh, a nice change of pace. It'll be fame and villa approach for Nagano and Isilda soon. Uh, fame and villa is uh, such a fantastic ace game map. Um... Still, still my favorite, my favorite map in in Company of Heroes Two, in the one v one section of the game. Um, that's going to be really intense, actually. And uh, I mean, I didn't actually clock who had the faction selection there, but I think it would be, I think it would be Nagano, actually. Yes, indeed. Um, and they're just teeing up the players uh, right now. Nagano will have choice yeah he had a much uh, yeah. superior victory point yeah. lead for certain both players are here which means they haven't actually started their um second game of the lower bracket quite yet which is a good chance for stormless and i to have a break um <laughs> i did say there would be an announcement at five o'clock gmt but we haven't got on there guys so you know i'm a man of my word i will stick to that word um i'll get stern panther to do another raffle soon big shout out to ed 80 hertz um yo 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 my good friend Stem. Can I uh, could I address something quickly before we before we go? Uh, sure, yeah. I do I, I do see occasional comments on um uh like actually there's one right now like no one has picked OKW in this tournament why why nerf I mean uh, they have they have actually done that uh, it has appeared and I would you know say go back and look through some of the replays there are still uh, you know very good strategies for all the factions right now uh, the reason why these commanders are being played so frequently and the reason why it's meta is because it's uh, once familiar to it's like it's uh, mm. it's a path of least resistance thing so actually it's uh, you know it's dominating for a reason. Ostrupen's dominating because you, you're quick into light vehicles on tier two. You know, you're, you're trading effectively because Ostrupen is so cheap. So these are the reasons why, like, so certain commanders are in. Um, 
you know, it's uh, it's interesting to watch. But do do go back and like. Well, I always think it's fair to say people educate yourself on. Well, they're going to be educated. They don't have a choice because they'll be seeing an OKW in the next game, won't they? Asia Mint only as, as an OKW player. Um, so Asia Mint, the people's champion of today, playing non-meta with Soviets earlier, is going to give us more of that same stuff. Um, so I, I completely agree with Dan. Educate yourself, but to be honest. You don't really have a choice. Oh, I've got to point this out, by the way. The game ended on a railway artillery um, doobly do. So let me just show that. It's pretty cool. There you go. That's how the game ended previously. A nice little uh, explosion. Very high res dust particles, but pretty good from a uh, the default perspective. Beautiful graphics and code too, as always. Uh, Solus and I are always quick to point that out. And uh, we, we're going to go on a little break now because the next game is starting. Uh, well, they're setting up to start. They're getting in the lobby right now, which means we have about five minutes to play with. Um, we're going to do a raffle so you can get a copy of um, Co. 1 on Android, uh, which is going to be pretty cool. And then soon, either after this game or maybe after we come back, there's going to be an announcements, um, official announcements regarding Company of Heroes 2. Um, so, you know, we'll see you in a sec. Thanks and bye-bye.
Guys, one minute warning, we will be live in game two of Dev Amazement, and we're going to go hot straight into the game after our uh, brief caster's comfort break there. So, uh, come back to the main stream. Welcome. And welcome. And as you see, the atmospheric beauty that is Amelie Fields unfurl before you. Hang on one sec, guys. Sometimes this happens. Hang on one second. <laughs> <laughs> it is a thing. <laughs> Stop laughing at me. The tech problems is is part of the KOTU community. <laughs> sometimes they cover for it, and sometimes they fail. Anyway, anyway. Stream test. There we go. The, the Hello there. <laughs> Hello there, and welcome to Asiamans, the man of the moment. Everybody, it says one nil up. That's because he won his allies. He won his Soviets versus the mighty Wehrmacht in the first game of the lower bracket semi-final today. It was a fantastic comeback versus three-time world champion Devem. Stormus, what, what exactly happened in that first game? Talk us through it for those just joining the stream. Well, the first game just showed uh, an amazing performance from Devon playing as the Ostrupen Doctrine. He was all the way up the field. He was uh, hitting hard. He had defensive positions everywhere, locked down with the double MGs. It's kind of beautiful game. He led that game by uh, 400 VPs, uh, or sorry, 350 at one point. Um, and then suddenly, just when it was at breaking point, Asia Mint, who had just been on the rocks constantly, had just exploded into the enemy lines. He caused chaos. He took down Panzerwerfer, Panzer IV. You know, he, he just st stacked and started to snowball into this incredible late game of T-34s, backed up with the S-35, and in the end just dominated DevM. Fantastic game. If you didn't see it, I highly recommend you go back and watch that one. It's another one of the games of the tournament. Um, but it led to what was a, a, a game that DevM had to lose. Um, he lost it. And Asian just showed us that he is uh, has the potential to play phenomenally at the, 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 the top level that this game can offer from the back foot. And that is uh, is something that Devon has got to be really careful of in this game. Talking about back foot, we're on the front foot with Devon right now. Ever the aggressor when in times of trouble. Devem often jumps on his chariot of war, in this case the WC-51 using light vehicles to get him straight back into a series. I've been watching this guy do this for the best part of a decade. I'm talking since 2012. After an early game 
defeats, he'll often come back with light vehicles and smash his way back into a series. And he's now on the last life of his last life. He's lost a series early on in this tournament, throwing him down to the lower bracket. And now in the lower bracket, he's lost one game of a best of three series, meaning it's now do or die for the Portuguese maestro. Let's concentrate on the tactics in front of us. The Stone Pioneer has already been pushed off once, meaning that uh, Asia Mint has not had any fuel. That's excellent use of the WC5 1 plus 4, but Asia Mint's back with a vengeance. He's now going for four Folks Grenadiers. Talisman from GCS2 era vintage. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually quite nice to get that uh, fourth Volks Grenadier out because uh, USF just they, they just continue to stack infantry as they as they tech. Um, this is early actually. Devem's gone for the lieutenant um, very quickly. He's not got uh, third rifleman out in the field, so uh, Asian is going to have, a, I believe, a bit of an advantage here. Um, but let's just quickly recap at the start of the game. It was amazing from DevM to like pop the rifleman squad in the jeep and drop them off at this strategic point outside of Asia Mint's base, which has denied in that early game fuel. Um, and that's still in effect right now. That was an incredible decision, incredible play that is uh, still having a lasting effect <laughs> four minutes into the game. Yeah, that's so. the beauty of the cutoff. And, uh... DevM's got in it early on, and we know full well. I mean, DevM did a guide on it, for, go, for God's sake. Go check out Code2.org. Put it into YouTube. Not YouTube, sorry. Google. Code2.org. DevM. USF. You'll find one of the best guides ever written for Company of Heroes 2. It's about how to play United States forces in a kind of overlapping waves of aggression style where you just do not let up and you demolish and dominate your opponents. And uh, that's what he's looking to do today. In this game two of the series, we could be seeing a second series go to the third ace game of the best of three. Yep, and, uh, I'm actually hopeful that we do. Uh, by the way, cavalry riflemen have uh, arrived on the field. That was the uh, reason why there wasn't that third rifleman uh, there. We've just seen, by the way, radio silence pop the infantry. They get a little bit of a boost to their speed there, and they're just charging this WC-51 down. Light arms fire, just trying to... Uh, penetrate the bonnet of the jeep which is uh, really cool devem's actually he's not uh, impervious to radio silence usage but he's got resistance because he doesn't use tact map he is a camera um user in that he only uses the main camera of the game and he doesn't use the tact map but uh, there's a nice bit of blob in there by Asia Mint, unlucky to not kill the rear echelons the reason he didn't by the way oh he did what the hell Max range volley from the first grenade is there just as they look likely to escape like an 80s slasher flick. He comes back at the last second and gets the brutal stab in the back. I, to be honest, I was secretly hoping that they wouldn't get away on that health for as long as they did. Well, the thing is, is, is the aim to fire time. It's just like FPS gaming. You know, if you've been sprinting in, for example, Call of Duty, and it takes a while for your crosshairs to return. It's the exact same with the infantry. If there's like a building mm. blocking them, they have to then regain their focus. And that was just enough for the rear echelon to seemingly get away if it wasn't for the uh, great accuracy in this case. Yeah, it's... um. An important pickup again, you know, because we we talked in a previous game when you lose the the mine sweeper uh, sweeper squad, which is the echelons for USF, then, um, you know, at the moment it's kind of a let's just hope Asia Mint doesn't plan on planting many mines. In the last game, he did, and uh, he'd do well to uh, invest some resources in that right now. I feel. I just heard it for the first time that inevitable caster bias that creeps in whenever we want to see an ace game. And we know it's going to happen. It always happens because it's such a British thing as well. I mean, it's cultural. We do love an underdog, don't we, Storms? And right now, Dev M is 1-0 down on his very last life in the tournament. And um, he's looking to try and get back into this. Stewart's now out. First shot is a miss. First Grindy go forward, but of course he's hot on the trigger. The reversal shortcut there. Getting him out of danger and out of Faust range. Uh, Asia Mint, of course, with uh, Special Operations Doctrine. This reminds me of the uh, of the series between Devon and Love Nest that was uh, cast in the lower bracket last weekend. And uh, it's exactly the same setup. Devon 
Um, actually, not the same setup. Devon was uh, not playing uh, mechanized on this instance, but uh, it was a game that had serious legs, and uh, Devon proved that uh, even when the game really, really went against him, he was able to pull himself back late game, USF, uh, on the back foot, which is really, really hard to do. Um, so uh, this is going to be an interesting game. Um, Asia Mint right now is uh, like we're coming up eight minutes. There is an AT on the field, but Raketten is in build at the moment to deal with the light vehicles. Uh, perhaps a, a, tight, a tad bit late, I'm not sure. Only but, a tad uh, bit, and the Stewart has had a nice little... I was going to say area of operation there, or a timing window where he's got some serious kills, and he only got one kill in all that time before the... Wait, I, I swear he just started building a raquette and Verfa Stormless. Did you say it and then he stopped as soon as you said it? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he toggled with it for a second. Maybe my eyes deceived me. He is certainly I just... Know. I mean, he's... Okay, well, I mean, he's he's mechanized regiment, so maybe the Puma's going to be the option here, and, and you know... Uh... Could be. Puma's an excellent choice of anomaly. Very nice, open sight lines through the center here. Puma, of course, a uh, long-range warrior, constantly... Uh, Jumping in and out, trying to get... Yes, indeed it is the Puma. I'm so glad after we... You said it, and then I entered a monologue about it. I'm so glad he decided to go for it. Often, Stormless and I have wasted much casting energy on talking about a teching option that never actually happens. We're just wiping our brows like it paid off. Oh, I don't have to deal with the Twitch chat abuse. Oh. Stormless, I've so enjoyed the fact that you're actually wiping your brow to exemplify your point only for me I right am. now. It feels... Is it just me and you casting? Do we have any fans out there? I'm not even sure anymore. We'd be doing this for <laughs> just on our own anyway. Are we still relevant? <laughs> the year is 2037. <laughs> Dan and Matt have barely any hair follicles left, but they are... <laughs> Still many co-games to cast. <laughs> anyway, we've got a nice bit of suppression this time from the 50 cal. We've also had... Oh, this is a bigger picture. The Puma's out and the WC5-1's out of here. Yeah, it's a nice pickup. And, and fortunate that the Puma found the WC-51 first because it's more guaranteed than getting the kill on the Stuart. So um, I would say that's been very fortunate. Now there's some ground attack uh, going on from Asia Mint on top of the, uh, the 50 cal machine gun. Which is interesting. Um, <laughs> and, and, do you know what? I like this because you should still be taking guest shots constantly to, you know, just just try and get lucky um, you know, with units. Never never let them sit and do nothing. Um, you know, be like an employer. Pretend you own the business. Everything has to be doing something constantly. Exactly. You there? Why aren't you working? Oh, I'm just a lieutenant. Do something! Do something now! I'm lying in ambush! I don't care! <laughs> now he's heard me! No... This is my lunch break! I thought <laughs> I abolished those! <laughs> 50 cal's being forced away by the Sturm Gewehrs of the Folks Grenadiers and the Lieutenants in very hot pursuit back to base there. Stuart comes to mitigate short camouflage ever popular amongst most players. Your tank is not a shark, as US. You're doing it wrong, apparently, according to this tournament. <laughs> it's almost like Dev M's a child. How would you like to paint your tank? Like a shark! Really I, like I a shark? Use, I use the same skin. Um, I always say it reminds me of the uh, 90s cartoon Street Sharks. Oh, yes! And Biker Mice from Mars as well, you know. It's got that kind of vintage feel. I like it. Oh. By the way, Puma are getting some really good ground attacks through uh, line of sight blocker onto the uh, Stuart. And you see there, um, we have got weapon rack unlocked, so there's Oh, cavalry rifle in the east, though. Just to interrupt there, getting an all important squad wipe on the folks grenadier. So good defense by Devem with the bazookas, and then a nice execution in the east. If Devon was just a bit quicker there, he would have been able to get a snare on the uh, Puma and fortunately let that uh, get away. Uh, this is a terrible retreat path for this MG34 oh. now running down through the center. Now that can be recruited for Devon, and we all know that Devon loves his uh, his machine guns. He Give does. The third one, so. and that's going to be really hard to come back from. And I think that uh, machine guns are a, a great added benefit to Dev M. Of course, a Co-1 veteran uh, as the United States and Co-1, he wouldn't have needed machine guns. But coming here as two, 
has that kind of recoil ability for players with the comeback mechanics inherent. You can't just expect one good assault to finish the game. You have to kill confirm. And um, he's doing that with machine guns because it just stops you getting the flank off to get back into things. It's a great uh, addition to his arsenal over the years. If you click on every machine gun Devim has right now and look at the area that it covers, uh, you know, he's, he's locking down Asia into his base right now with uh, very f few routes to uh, to escape. And this is uh, a, a huge loss for Asia um, What's that in machine gun in the, in the right of the map there? I've just seen that one by uh, Asia Mint. I think he's biding time right now. Now, this is certainly not in the employee handbook that we handed out at the start of the game, Stormless. <laughs> there's, there's no answer for this. <laughs> yeah, it's, um... Very much on gardening leave, it seems. And it's two loops to join the fray. Very diddy tank. I have no idea how three men fitted in there. With the box on wheels. Gosh, just... Uh, what's happening? Poor Asia Mint, actually. Um, just trying to figure out a way around this. Luke's is not a bad idea, I think, because it is actually able to go up to the uh, machine guns and dislodge them. And uh, the effects of that just being seen now, like vehicle push. Um, hopefully, this will allow Asia Mint to get territory back. I yeah. Think he just lost a machine gun he again. Did. In the in the east, yeah, he gunned him down. The same machine gun that was not following uh, human resources procedures as found on the intranet of Company of Heroes uh, has now been brutally punished and castigated. <laughs> and two loops trying to get his way back into things. Change his target, however. Rear echelon's given a pass. And this is the uh, the duo of destruction for OKW from Mechanized. The Lukes and the Puma. Maybe going on an ambulance kill, perhaps. This is very good uh, aggression from uh, from Asian, by the way. He's got to be really careful here of his light vehicles as the cavalry riflemen come in with the potential anti-vehicle satchel charge. He did get it in time. Oh! This is... Nice. Uh, Back away from him! He's, Puma. <laughs> he's got leprosy! Back away from him! Like everybody did. Like when your friend gets bitten by a zombie and you see his sleeve. Just back away from that bad boy. He's got a satchel on him. Yeah, I mean, then you look at how devastating that satchel was. Uh, Luke's wiped out. And uh, he has to build another one. And it's not wrong for him to build another one because he just has to have something against the machine guns. But uh, he's just not, not been able to play so so efficiently here. Radio Ooh, silence is on, but the machine gun positions from DevM are too strong. Stormless, to uh, we've had a damaged engine on, we've had a damaged engine on the Stuart. The Puma's going in for it, but it was great moves from the Lieutenant, and again, those cavalry riflemen just block the Puma's progress. So it's just good play all round there. Good anticipation. Players are, are seriously aggressive, actually. You, you've just watched DevM back in the base. Now he's coming back up to uh, Asia Mint. You know, and, 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 uh, this one's likely to get pushed back as well. But oh, when we actually look at dear. the game, if we look at the resources, DevM, I think, is... Oh, he's had to drop out the game, Stormus, because the Lux has been damaged engine again with Bazooka's dawning upon him. And the writing was on the wall for Asia Mint. We're going to two deciding ace games. And DevM and Asia Mint have joined the party. we go. Stormus is getting eye strain due to the lighting. Can we all just thank this man Stormus? He, he literally, he, you know, no extra sacrifice. You get A here with his yellow spotlights, you know, with no eye strain. Stormus wants, you to, wants to do this professionally, so he's blinding himself for us. I mean, I think, I think he all deserves a big round of applause in chat. Oh, it's announcement time! It's announcement time. <laughs> just wear sunglasses, somebody says. Just miss all the game. What's happening? Tell me, Matt. <laughs> well, you you just gave me a great suggestion there. You're just like, why don't you turn the light off 
when the game is live. <laughs> I was like, why have I not thought of this? <laughs> we six did that for years. <laughs> six years I've been doing this. And I haven't, it hasn't, that hasn't come to me at all. I was just thinking, uh, yeah. okay. Yeah, so next time we're, uh, <laughs> we're turning the light off. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We did it for the World Championships, remember, in, um, in 80 Hertz Studios. We had this huge, big, hanging light. And we turned off. What we're going to do, keep talking because they all want the announcement. So we're just going to tease them now and just be like yeah, talking yeah. about other stuff. Do you know, these these are really useful. So you have to pick one up. It's like a miniature flask because I often find too much coffee in the morning can like ruin your productivity in the first hour of work. So I take a small flask in the car with me, just enough mm. to get me going rather than a big mm. flask, which, you know, would be counterproductive. Right. Okay, okay. Stormless <laughs> wants the announcement too, by the sounds of it. <laughs> <laughs> He's not playing ball. Okay, okay, okay. I have been... I'm so tempted to tease people here. I've been given the authority to do one official announcement throughout this weekend. I was also told, because they knew I'd probably overhype it, to try and be reserved and to do it on the no. first day. <laughs> no, no one said that. <laughs> To put it simply, there have been rumours in our community that there would be no further balance patches. I can confirm for you right now. Drum roll, please. It's true. There's not going to be any more. Company Heroes 2 is going to be officially uh, cancelled on Steam servers. They're pulling the plug, guys. We're not going to have a code 2 anymore. No, I'm joking. There is a balance patch in the works and it will be hitting in quarter one, 2021. That's right, everybody. In the next several months it's been worked on right now and it is going to affect the core armies that's what they're working on and they've they've actually got resources in place as well for this it the, it's been approached and really you know with intent and it's almost just how cool is that to hear the core armies are going to be the core shape and structure of the armies is going to be indelibly um changed for the better of the coming heroes to balance how cool is that heading into the new year yeah, it's it's very cool and it's very welcome um, because we we shouldn't uh, just overlook that um, Relic and the, and the community balance team have done a lot of work in the last couple of years to um, you know to make incremental changes not just to the balance but also to the the game engine and so on itself to to stabilize. We have the sixty four bit version coming soon, which is just absolutely <sighs> incredible for game stability and um, and the memory usage. That's that's incredible. But now to know that the balance is going to uh, be seriously seriously looked on and change in a way that you know it's um you know I, I i i hold high hopes for it actually and i think you know we could be looking this time next year at just the totally different co to the totally different player base you know and um you know just 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 made up because because it doesn't it incentivizes people to play and it brings in new players when the balance is is locked down you know obviously it, let's be honest like there are players who who went away from the game for balance issues maybe mm. even um you know game integrity issues so you know hopefully we start to see those people come back and we retain the player base and it it, it, it will just grow you know the, the game will grow off the back of this it's, you just uh... have to have that freshness as well i actually don't think this balance is that bad people might laugh at me but at least the games are exciting and fun um, Ostrup and yes, they are the flavor of the month and they probably would stay that way. I'm not going to deny it. I mean, coming here as one, I'd, uh, I always talk about Co1, people hate, hate it, but they had folks grenadiers for Wehrmacht and, and folks grenadiers were the fleshier, sorry, like easier to cap with, easier to take punishment version of grenadiers. You also had grenadiers at tier two. And that's exactly what we've seen emerge with coming here as two now. Ostrup and became uh, like a folks grenadier esque unit that were the. Uh, kind of fleshy underbelly of the machine guns and the packs etc um so now that i think it sounds like from what sanders just said some problematic meta units and the core armies are being looked at that's really exciting i don't know what that means uh in terms of the actual uh, mechanics of what's going to change all i know is change is good because it keeps the game fresh and keeps people excited and um, there are going to be a lot of community tournaments next year um and i'm going to be announcing them tomorrow same time tomorrow they told me to do this and at the official announcement today and we've got some very exciting community tournaments i'm talking like serious hype not just kind of stuff you've seen this year with master league it's going to be some really interesting stuff and i've been given permission to allude to them tomorrow so same time tomorrow we'll have some new announcements as well um and we've got this interesting in chat uh doom dealer says i like turtles so that's also something that we should probably announce i think 
Yeah, I think we can all relate to that. Uh, they're nice, aren't they? Have you ever have you ever had a turtle or a tortoise as a pet? I know you're not meant to mm. anymore. I know a great guy that can sell you one at the pub. No, that's not what happened. We had a rescue tortoise once, right? You put it down on the ground. I was studying for an accountancy exam. It literally just walked into a wall and headbutted the wall over and over again. They're not the most intelligent pets, basically. Very much like playing Ostrupin right now in auto match. You're just headbutting a wall over and over again. Don't play like a tortoise. Play like Asia Mint is what we're asking. (laughs) Um, Stormless, I'm just going to check on the Steam group now, mate, to see how we're going. Um, it looks like the next game hasn't quite started yet. They're taking a little bit of a break, it seems. I'll I'll confirm that. And then we will take a break ourselves. Uh, but big shout out to the balance team. I think Sanders is in chat, so he'll be able to answer questions. He knows a little bit more about it and what he's, we're allowed to say or not. Um, so uh, he'll answer some questions there. Big, big shout out to Sanders, good community member. And... Um, and yeah, let's go over to a break, Stormless, unless you've got any fur- anything further to say. No, not at all. Okie dokie. <laughs> all right, speak, speak soon, guys. We'll be back in five minutes. Thank you.
There's like you, you can you you cut the base off the garlic completely, so it's like all the cloves, the bottom are off, right? And then mm -hmm. and then you rub that over the steak, so you're effectively getting. Do you know what I mean? That's that's. Tastes like broccoli. It's amazing. It tastes like the most incredible thing in the world. Guys, one minute warning, we're going straight live into Feynmanville Approach for the deciding ace game between Isolde and Nagano next. One minute warning. Sherman ready for action, and Asilda is ready for action as well, hailing from the UK, playing his United States forces in the upper bracket final, drawing one all. He's level with... Pioneers. Sorry, <laughs> I did not catch that lead. <laughs> he is uh, up against the, uh, the fearsome power of Nagano in on the south side, playing as the Ostir and the Ostrupen Doctrine. Um, A, I was just thinking when you led into that game, you know, like, wow, one of these, uh, one of these two players is going to be going into the grand finals after this game. 
Um, it is, of course, our famed ace game on Feynmanville Approach. Fantastic map. Uh, the appropriate map, I think, for a, a game of this magnitude. Yeah, simply doesn't get better than this as I uh, follow camera on an Austrupen squad. You didn't miss it. There's an announcement, by the way, that uh, there will be a balance patch in the new year at some point. Basically, um, yeah, we're going to get more balancing, which is pretty nice. Pretty exciting. But let's focus on the tactics inherent to this incredible $20,000 tournament. $10,000 for the first place winner. These guys are in the upper brackets. They're unbeaten in a match series thus far, but one of them will be beaten after this very game because they're one all up in a best of three. Rifleman dodging and getting to the only entrance of this. Oh, no. They're just waiting for them to try and come closer. Are they there? You go. <laughs> He's testing him. He wants him to try and do something. Or is he waiting for another squad? We'll have to wait and see. Interesting. I'm trying to analyze that one because I'm pretty sure the riflemen win that win that attack in that building anyway. Um, yeah, I, that's what I was thinking in the back of my mind. What is the purpose of it? Because there's no door on that side, is there? So the pioneers never jump out. <laughs> <laughs> let's not let's not question the mighty Isildur too much. Probably, um, for a lot of people's estimation, the best player in the world at this point in time. But uh, yeah. Elsewhere, we got the MG42 going straight up through the center. A really good game feel by Nagano there. Or is it? Let's check the Fog of War. Is No, he only just sees that Rifleman now. He's got Ostrupen protecting his flank somewhat, but the Rifleman... Yes, there we go. MG42 is able to reposition. Yeah, I think uh, for Nagano here, I think this is an easy read. He's uh, dominated the fuel early on, and there's only an Echelon over there, so he should be pretty clued up that uh, Isildur is going for uh, fuel in the east. And uh, that's going to need to be where the, the MG42 goes. Um, sight is actually really important here because there's a lot of sight blockers on this map in the center. So actually the MG42 is leaving itself open actually to uh, to the, the left of the VP. But uh, nothing of a threat over there. We know that. Not at the moment anyway. And uh, let's go over to the tap map and just watch it from that vantage point as we see that the entirety of the engagements are right here right now but interestingly right now in base we have something a little bit surprising or is it no like mechanized being built i was hoping he was going for the infantry company and maybe a sniper it wouldn't be uh, that surprising the guy who has used a lot of snipers in this tournament um and yeah I haven't seen him use it this time just a like mechanized for now getting the access to the faust of course for the ostrupen just in time for the wc51 to uh, be fausted yeah, there's like a near guarantee at the moment that your, your USF opponent is going to be playing uh, USF mechanized. So I don't know quite how the sniper would fare against the, the WC-51 here. Fare well against the rifleman if you can protect him. Yeah. Three Fausts surround him. It's all about keeping the sniper behind a Faust blanket. It is possible. Let's not talk about theoretical build orders. Those we are prone to do. Uh, MG-42 coming into the center. WC-51 backing away for now. Meanwhile, in the north, we've had a heavy cover battle. It's one of those where you could just not really have to watch it until they retreat, and there's not much more to say than that, because heavy cover is probably the strongest mechanic in Company of Heroes 2. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, it's an important mechanic as well, because a lot of the time you need to sit in heavy cover and kind of draw an engagement out as long mm. as you can. Um, whilst you're sitting on a resources or, you know, like Nagano is right now, it's, it's important. Um, it's up to Isildur to come up with something that is going to break that cover position. In some games we've seen players go for uh, flamethrowers, but uh, actually was it Nagano in the first game who went for the uh, grenades with USF? Just to try and flush the Ostrupen out, there are options available, but uh, some of them will be costly to tacking. And we've got the Lieutenant with the Bazooka as already as the light counter to the 222 armoured car. And uh, that's that's why it's not been able to be as aggressive as it would otherwise want to be. Meanwhile, Pioneers in a bit of jeopardy. There's a lot of M1 Grand Rifles firing upon it right now and a bit of negative cover to come. Can he survive? Oh, it looks very unlikely at this stage. Oh my, what a, what a lucky escape there. I think if he actually just stayed in that fight a little bit longer, he may have been rewarded with that final shot. It's, uh, 
a shame that uh, Nagano coming over with the Panzer Grenadiers I think was just the threat that was needed to, uh, to force those units back a bit. Scout car very ballsy here, trying to push the uh, Lieutenant away from getting in that building with the 222, weakening the squad substantially. Diaz march forward as the 222 is more targeted yet again. Meanwhile, in the west, we've got an engagement with the rifleman being forced away by the MG42. One more shot. Couldn't get the rounds in. Very unlike the buzz saw. This is an insane early game from Nagano. Uh, he's really switched something on here that is just. It's still is unable to deal with it. It's the same build. They've been playing this uh, with each other constantly in this series so far. So, um, you know, Sildor should know what to uh, to do here. He's going for the Stuart, but right now, when you actually look at a plus 33 fuel income for Nagano, it's been that way for quite a while now. And um, that's a huge resource lead, and it's going to be going on for quite some time. Let's see how Asilda tries to break out of this. We've got early round dominance from Nagano, but the steward is making its entrance as expected. Pack 40 is building at this exact moment in time as expected. Just like a game of chess, the early early game patterns and moves are very similar. They're called openings almost. And in this case, the two openings have been utilized. Sicilian versus... Uh, Pawn E2 to E4, the King's opening. Very, very familiar stuff, but it, this is when it starts to get interesting. How we start to see the players use their evolving armies with synergy, symbiosis, etc. Yeah, there's been some interesting mechanics going on here. The, the, uh, the Stuart was the unit that Isildur needed to get back into this game. Um, Nagano's had a lot of map control. He hasn't been planting any mines at all. Uh, so the Stuart's kind of a free reign right now. Um, and just the S minefield there, which we see. But uh, where are the tellers? You know, so, so important. Oh. There's some S mines being destroyed. And here we go, a little bit of... Uh... Oh no, that was just the ambulance coming out. I hoped it was a new vehicle. <laughs> but no. No, indeed it wasn't. The enemy is taking so there's that mad rush of incitement. Like, oh, 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 oh it's the ambulance. It's the ambulance. Ah, damn it. <laughs> the so ambulance is good in its own right, though. I mean... Oh, this is interesting. So AT gun here from Nagano is actually... I don't know whether he was trying to ground attack or whether he's intentionally breaking the uh, green cover uh, wall there, which isn't a bad thing to do because in Company of Heroes, of course, these uh, small hedgerows and cover, like, you know, walls and things do actually act as sh uh, shot blockers. They can uh, you know, block the shots from AT gun. So opening up the map and terraforming is uh, important in this game. Yeah, I expect you to make a new habitable planet for your uh, infantry. You've got to do so. You've got to cultivate the cover. Remove those mines. Reproduce, etc. Ostrup and taken down by rifleman rampaging. That was the work of the Stuart for a long time in the north there. However, said Stuart's now gone forth, trying to get past the pack 40. Asilda has pulled the trigger in a moment of sheer aggression. He wants this 2-2-2. Two -two -two. Can he finish it? No, he can't. Meanwhile, the pack 40 is going around on its wheels. They're pushing it as furiously as they can, trying to get a shot off on the Stuart. There's balls of steel from uh, Isildur here. He's very, very accurately predicted that the uh, AT gun couldn't stay where it was. He just knew that it would be uh, completely unwise for Nagano to stay and, and keep twirling the thing around. And uh, that game sense allowed him to keep the Stuart alive and perhaps even get away with this pack 40 here. That would be a oh huge loss for Nagano. It was, however, the Sturmgewehrs were blazing and they do the work they needed to do. Uh, notably there, notice everybody, Asilda did not do the common mistake in that situation, which would have been to reverse the pack away to show the heavy cover shield of the pack 40. He needed to get out of there quick as possible. He went forward. If he was had any chance of surviving there and getting uh, the weapon, it would have been to go forwards, which it would seem counterintuitive at first. 
But good play by both players. Great assault by Sildur. He only comes out with a win against the Ostrupen squad, which has already been repl uh, replaced. Let's go over to the stats, check out the KD in the early game. Just see it's 39-35, not too much to talk about there, although I suppose that should be... I think the Ghana's lost a significant amount more units somewhere in that. <laughs> yeah, somewhere in those, kills. In those statistics. <laughs> There's we a tightrope video. We did put up tightrope's video. <laughs> yeah, this. I watched that. There's been... Well, of course, if you uh, position yourself too far left of this cow, that counts as a friendly kill. <laughs> and it depends which season of the year it is in-game as well. It's currently spring, so that would mean that all wooden fence objects could be a pyrotechnic flame kill, allegedly. No, the stats of Go2 are of things to behold. Many a Reddit post has been made. Oh, we've had a grenade in the north. Oh, nice work by the Panzer Grenadiers there. Lieutenant survives, though. Stuart goes in and punishes them. Stuart play from uh, Sildor is so, so good. But uh, we are 11 minutes, sorry, 12 minutes into the game right now. And less than 200 VPs remain uh, for Sildor as USF. That's, uh, that's a really, really big VP game play from Nagano. He's dominated, he's triple capped right, you know, right from the start of this game. And uh, the pressure for Isildur to perform here is, is insane. Um, he still needs to get up to major tier. He still needs to get out vehicles and, and start pushing back the field. I don't think he can do it with his current army. So um, time really is of the essence. And, uh, you know, some high-level players have suggested that our beloved Matt Feynmanville does favour the southeastern Wehrmacht player a little bit. And I'm not too sure about that, but maybe that is the case. And if it is the case, Nagano must have had faction selection. He chose Wehrmacht in the arguably slightly superior position, meaning Isilda not gaining the VPs he needed, perhaps, on Amelie Fields is now playing with the United States forces. But taking nothing away from Nagano, of course. Just a little bit of insight there from some of the more cynical amongst us. <laughs> I mean, th this series is, um, out of the two series we're kind of alternating between at the moment, perhaps the, uh, the, the least conclusive, because both of these players can still end up in the grand finals. Indeed. They could even meet each other again. Um, so it's oh, Pack 40 finishes off hit. the Stewart! Faust pack 40, 1 2 combo, and he's down for the count. Oh, but there you go, there's a nice follow up. Is that a mine planted really far forward there? How did he get the kill? Was it a bazooka, it was a bazooka shot? Must have been the bazooka shot, yeah. Just wasn't caught on my frame of the camera for some reason. No, it wasn't. The, 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 the lieutenant doesn't have the kill there, actually. I didn't 100% see what that was. I'm looking for it, but I can't see it. AT gun, says Arafield. There is an AT gun. gun. Is, yes, ah, that makes perfect gun. sense. They're great at killing oh. T's. What have we seen, Thomas? Uh, there's a machine gun just took, like, the full wipe <laughs> from the lieutenant grenade there. Uh, whole unit is down. And uh, actually, th this game is just, like, trading a hell of a lot right now. So I think we probably just need to focus on what's going on. No Indeed. suppression platform now for Nagano. Sildor has a big army, so there's a very limited window of time right now to get back into this game. Before the Panzer IV arrives, uh, even when the Panzer IV is in, there is still the uh, the M1 AT gun from USF, so it's still going to be difficult, but Nagano just completely let loose of the game there. Isildur still has the WC-51 Jeep, so he's still mass-capping the map right now whilst Nagano's back in base, and... Uh, I'm sorry, but if Nagano was to in any way lose this game whilst being 496 VPs in the lead 15 minutes in, like that would be <laughs> amazing. But that um, assault right there might be a good turning point. But however, the Panzer IV is coming out. The M1 AT gun does not have veteran C1. He does have bazookas as well, but Panzer IV has a, a glory period <laughs> to work within. Just like uh, the U-boat crewmen often called it glory periods when the British were didn't really have the technology to spot them, basically. And it's now uh, open season on Fame and Villa Approach, or at least it will be until Asildo gets his second M1 18. First shot from the Panzer Ball. Is it a good one? He goes stationary. Heavy comes to the rescue, perhaps. Wow, they're just uh, really incredible now to see this turn of events. And it's going to be Asildor who's going to be getting uh, double fuel uh, in a second. 
so uh, Isildur right now, he uh, he hasn't he hasn't got a uh, major tier up yet, so we're not going to be seeing those vehicles just yet, but if he is able to just uh, lock down, build up some manpower, he'll be able to rush out a vehicle to contend with the, the Panzer IV. Yeah, it'll be the Sherman most likely, 76mm of course is what we've seen thus far, but the fact that he has the two M118 guns shows us that he's bunkering down in the mid game for the time being. Could leave himself vulnerable to a Panzerwerfer, perhaps, with the AT guns. That's the pattern we've seen thus far in the meta. <laughs> I don't think Nagano's going to be building a Panzerwerfer anytime soon. <laughs> well, no, but that's what the strategy, exact strategy yes, we've yeah. seen in the previous games, you know? Yeah. Oh, this is a juicy shot for the Panzer IV. If only, if only it could aim. Having some unfortunate uh, shots in the opening to this game. The uh, two M1s just opened up on the, the Panzer IV there, so Nagano knows that there's kind of an immediate counter to his uh, to his medium vehicle. Panzer Grenadiers, Veterans 3 they toss the bundle. Nice retreat by the rifleman. M1 AT guns are now left exposed. Panzer IV is going to go down in the south, watching on as the Austrian are forced away and fires. With a bad shot again, only two kills on the Panzer so far. The so-called glory period is not panning out at this point in time, at least. Panzer Grenadiers, meanwhile, it's a, they're having a, a good one. They've got 19 kills at this point. Yeah, excellent unit, um, especially on a map like this. Uh, you, you can see the struggle that the, the Panzer IV has here. There's so much green cover on this map. So many like natural blockers for, for things like this. And just taking ages for the Panzer IV to do that work. Probably not the best place for it to be having engagements either. Well, I mean, suppose where else? Because Asilda has a good amount of dominance at the moment. So I suppose he could go north, but then it almost feels like you're wasting it. If it's an engagement with Austria and rear echelons, Panzer IVs seem kind of underutilized. In the center, it seems underutilized, thanks to the two M1 AT guns. So basically, I just think isilda has got the counter out in time to really get a foothold in this map, and all of a sudden, that 146 victory point count doesn't seem that bad, because Nagano's past 400, he's down to 380 already. I mean, it's still pretty bad, it's just not that uh, woeful at this point. It seems like he's getting back into things. Yeah, but Nagano is a, a really fantastic player, and a fantastic player will be um, playing a bit cautiously right now, playing a bit reserved, trying not to lose too much manpower and just rebuilding that army to outplay the opponent again. This is a great grenade from uh, Isildur, just making it really hard for Panzer Grenadiers to get back on the field in a full capacity. One man off Stroop and very lucky to survive there as well in the east. Meanwhile, Nagano's flexing in the west, trying to push out and gain territories there. And I think, I, I think as you say, Stormless, he's being calm at Nagano. You, if you want to finish your opponent off at 146 victory points, sometimes it's better to just keep what you've got for the time being, or at least try to, and just build your own army up a little bit and try and counter what your opponent's doing. Uh, but at the moment, I have to say, Isilda seems to have stabilized in quite a good fashion. Yeah. It's really tough, and uh, during one of those engagements, Nagano lost his original Pioneer squad. I mean, he's just replaced that squad now to repair the uh, Panzer IV, but... You know, like, the, the kind of squad wipes that isilda has been getting. By the way, great nade on the retreat path from Isilda there, a little bit late. Doesn't get yeah. the Austrian on the retreat, but um, again, you know, we talk about Isildur. He's just he's capitalising on every single moment that is available to him. He's trying it. He's got the resources to try it. Yeah, that push through the centre earlier on and the MG wipe as well really just gave him the position he needed. Fantastic uh, top five in the world player um, von Aston in chat says. Um, Nagano will find it very difficult to win from here. I think that's that's very accurate. It's going to be really difficult because Isildur's gained control and has the build order that seems to counter exactly what Nagano has on the field. Um, let's see how he's going, doing for teching. Okay, he has battle phase 2. It's 35 fuel these days to get, to get to battle phase 3, but he's not going to be thinking about that. He's probably going to be thinking of maybe, I don't know, another Panzer IV at this point. Stug, perhaps, when the Sherman comes out? <laughs> I mean, what are his options here? 
Yeah, I think if he's looking at the uh, level of infantry on the field right now that he, he can't contend with, let's be honest, I don't think he's got anything that can contend with these riflemen. Um, major probably drops, gonna be major artillery play. on the MG42, forcing it away. Time me, and that's just insult to injury as well. And look, the Panzer IV has had to be used in the north. He's clearing trees right now, and it is versus, at this time, at least a rifleman. But that just shows you how well he is being countered by the two M1 AT guns. Good game so far. Nice chess match. Let's keep that analogy going. It is a good game, but look how quickly the VPs are equalizing. Not expecting that. Um, it's been really, really fast. And I would say Nagano is probably going to be on <laughs> around 150 VPs at this rate in, like, in, the, next, in the next 10 minutes. Uh, As both of us predict, it's almost it will be a second Panzer IV. As my voice cracks, it's been a tough day. That's <laughs> it. It's a, this is our fifth game of the day, is it? It's our first of two deciders. Yeah, it's our fifth game of the day. And we've got a possible further six. So let's keep them coming. Hey, it's Panzer IV forced away double M180 guns. Setting up with using the 30 munition ability yet again. Sabot rounds. Oh, here it is. Railway artillery must be on the MG. Indeed it is. Forcing him forward. And that was the correct decision. If he'd gone backwards, he would have been hit. Isildo with big brain thinking there. He chose the right exit for the house. Sherman's just uh, revealed itself uh, through the center, looking for the uh, decap of the strategic point that will connect Nagano to left side fuel. But the second Panzer IV is on the field. and. Actually, both of these really do need to go up together. Uh, the good thing with the double Panzer IV is they, they can actually flank and deal with the AT guns uh, together if they're good enough. So, if um, they're good enough, and they have to have uh, infantry coming up with them. Uh, it has to be part of a huge push, doesn't it? Panzer Grenadines will be great for that with the coordination ability, of course. As the Sherman drives forward, forcing away the Austrian once again. They both have sizable armies now. And, uh, and to quote a great community uh, caster and tournament organizer, and, uh, et cetera, Ami Poletsai Funk from back in the day, he remarked upon how Co2 games often t try and... And they get to the, the top le levels of tournament stormers. Sometimes they can have this standoff where they just... They wait till they get to 100 pop cap and then they push. <laughs> And it's, it's, it's been the same for a long time because when the stakes are high, you don't want to, you know, throw your cut, throw your chips into the table until you've got a stacked deck. And that's what they're doing right now. They're waiting for the, the decks to stack and to get that perfect hand until they bet their chips. And uh, that's what we're seeing. Yep, and uh, Nagano has his double hand fours now, which are kind of ready. Ready to go and clear up the, uh, the right-hand side of the map. I mean, interestingly, like in terms of a late game, um, Isildur would have an advantage here because USF can break the population cap, hopping in and out of its vehicles. Um, they would have an advantage if, if we rarely see the USF players in tournaments get that far uh, or use uh, use that mechanic. What's happening with the Ostrupin here? I'm pretty sure they're in the VP, but the VP is not decapping. It's... They were definitely in the There is now. Foot's over the line for certain if it wasn't before. And I think the, one of the. I don't know if it was me or you that said it, but Nagano playing steadily and not overstretching himself whilst he was on the back foot is just perfect co 2. He's allowed himself to rebuild his strategic forces and try and counter what Asilda's got. And um, he's now got the two Panzer IVs. If he was trying to do too much with just one Panzer IV, it would have ended in misery. And that's why he's still very much in this game. And uh, he will be able to try and get Isilda into a losing position to get rid of those last 146 victory points. <laughs> what have you seen, Stormus? I, I just just a lot of good gameplay all around actually there's a lot of uh grenades being thrown by Isildur Nagano's actually successfully uh, dodging all of them which is good to see he's got his he's got his right head on for this right now um 
But uh, actually, Nagana's at that stage, and I think we saw it in game one, where I feel like he's falling apart a little bit because there's a lot of clumping going on right now. We still have the Major on the field. Oh, but there's a great takedown oh. of the WC-51 with double pack 40s. Love that Beautiful double play. drum beat. The dum -dum as yeah. the WC-51 dances in flames to the sound of those drums, the pack 40s make their presence felt. This is good for, for Nagano, of course, getting rid of a reconnaissance vehicle. One of the best bits of balancing in Gun Heroes 2 is making these vehicles more about reconnaissance, giving them better sight lines, etc. Um, Lieutenant goes forward, Ostrupen pushed back. Pat 40 is getting more shots in, but this time under duress. And don't forget, he does have access to grenades. He could make himself felt now, the Lieutenant. This is risky. Panzer IV goes into the engagement in oh, reverse, oh, taking fire a there. shot from... A rear armor hits from the bazooka unnecessarily. Blitz is out of there. The As the Pat 40 just held their ground, they knew they had a bit of a uh, light cover here. The yellow shield denoting lower received accuracy. Um, so they're taking good advantage of that. But in the end, they do get decrewed. You do want to get your Pat 40's veteran seat. It's one of the most powerful veteran seats in the game. Meanwhile, <laughs> the North Sherman has uh, gone for a detour. The scenic <laughs> routes forcing away the Ostrupen. Gosh, the uh, the US F M one AT guns are uh, so painful for Nagano. I almost feel like because he hasn't got uh, tier four, he's not in battle phase three. Even like, I'm just thinking, it would even be wise just getting a mortar and just trying to smoke the M one AT guns because sorry, it's so sorry. effective right now. Hang on a second. What what is mortar? Oh, it's, I think I, th I think it comes from tier one or something. Uh, what what does it sure. do? I've never heard of this in, in elite level competitive, at least for the last several years. Mortar. Do yeah, you, is it some kind of vehicle? Oh, yeah, it's like a utility. utility <laughs> unit. No one really knows what it is. It's never used. <laughs> it's never been used. Nobody actually knows. <laughs> it's on the UI anyway. We can absolutely tell you all that it is a possibility for players to use the mortar. In fact, some, some have in the past. When Come to Heroes 2 was in beta, the most powerful unit in the game was the mortar. <laughs> Sherman goes forward, hands the Grenadiers. Standing by to give reconnaissance for the surviving pack, but he's going to try and destroy the neutralized pack. Can he do so? Nice bundle nade! Vet 3 riflemen in peril. And obliterated and taken out once and for all. Meanwhile, two Panzer IVs go round the outside, round the outside, round the outside. Yeah, it's an epic battle in the north while this is going on. They're trying to use the uh, broken house, uh, destroyed house, as a sight line blocker against the M1AT guns. That's allowing the uh, two Panzer IVs to dive in on the Sherman. And uh, it's good. I mean, it's doing the job of pushing the enemy back to base. But I think Nagano is going to have to start hitting the reverse. Oh, yes. Cancel the push. There's two M1s ready for him, though. Can they get the finishing shots? Attack rounds at max range, perhaps. Oh, he couldn't get it off. Oh, yes, he could. Yes. What a shot. Oh, my God. He repositioned and then got it off. NASA-style thinking there. The telemetry was... Oh, and he gets punished for it. What is happening in this game? What is happening? He put a man on the moon with that M1 AT gun shot, but he did not make it back to Earth with the squad that was doing the reconnaissance for him. What is going on in this game? Look at the victory points as well. Nagorno's now down past 100. He had a 300 victory point lead. And it's slipping through his fingers. Yeah, I see. Uh, great play from Isilda. I think he's a bit lucky there because he just... Um... You know, he just happened to have sight from the captain. Uh, there is artillery called down by the Major on top of the pack 40s and uh, look like they will get away from it. But now Nagano is able to capture uh, the left-hand side of the map and uh, lock himself down in the center. That's really important because actually, you know, Nagano's been waiting for this moment. He's got MG42s on the left in fantastic positions. Um, he's ready for a silver to come back onto the field. But uh, now it's it's just going to be a head-to-head -head engagement in the center for this VP. Oh my, that was uh, that was code to it. It's very best. It's all about that chaos, madness, brutality. We love it. It's what we're here for. No, <laughs> and there's some more of it right there. 
Another squad wipe for Isilda. These Shermans are working overtime. Yeah, that was just unfortunate. Oh, Plumping, Captain, Captain taken down as down. well. Oh my god. It's a carousel of lethality right now. And uh, we're seeing some of the worst shapes. Oh dear, oh dear. Incredible, really incredible. And, and both players, you can tell. Eight on the Ostrupen. Oh, that could have been so much worse. That could have been so much worse. They were clumped. That could have yeah. been 12 deaths there. What has happened? The players haven't started playing any worse Stormless. They've just started going for it. And because of that, because of that uncoiling of the spring in a, a violent act, we're now seeing some incredible plays and some... Dare I say it, it, some sad deaths. It, it's amazing what happens when the VPs drop below 100 because it's, it, it is just the trigger of, okay, I really have to move now. It doesn't matter what play style you have, even if you're the kind of person that likes to just um, lock down and bleed your opponent over time, you have to move when, uh, you know, when the VPs are triggered below 100. Uh, Isildur bringing out a uh, third Sherman. This, this time, time the, the M4A3. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I'm really surprised by that. I mean, I, I suppose it, it's, it's all the... Well, he's got the fuel, actually. She just wants the anti-infantry lethality. That tells you, Dan, it's VP um, City now. It's all about the victory points. You want more anti-infantry than anti-tank because if you can stop a cap with a better, um, more explosive round from a, a better AOE profile, you're going to want it, you know? Yeah, you're right. It's, um... Oh... I was wondering if that MG42 was going to go down there. Minimal health retained on that unit. And uh, Nagano is going to be uh, thankful to have uh, thwarted that push. Oh, Panzer Grenadiers were lurking. They wanted the bundle, Nate. They wanted it badly. Oh, gosh. Just had a supposed misfire from... I think he must have hit the ground underneath the tank. It can happen. Nothing happened. Oh, Panzer Grenadiers just went forward, by the way. Got rid of an M1 AT gun. Decrewed it. However, they now have to run the gauntlet. Wow. Incredible scenes on Feynmanville. A uh, very fitting ace game for this series. The two players who, uh, up to this point, only one of them had dropped a game in the tournament. Oh, so Panzer far. IV in jeopardy, Dan. M1 could... Oh, it couldn't finish the job. Meanwhile, the Sherman's gone all the way around the side. No more m, &M impressions from me this time. <laughs> and the Ostrupen has seen him. He could actually come in for the kill on the Panzer IV, I was thinking. That's why it looked exciting for me. Meanwhile, we have a standoff. Rear Echelon versus Ostrupen. Who's going to win for this day at least? Yeah, well, it's going to be uh, helped by the MG42. Oh, it's well Ostrupen, But uh, they are... Uh, obviously going to stay in there until the, the very last suppression to stop the, uh, the VP being capped. Which is smart play from the Sildor. He's really, uh, really milking this until the last moment. Yes, the southern victory point has not been capped for a while. There's nothing stopping it. The players with tunnel vision just slugging it out. They want this. They want it badly. And when that happens, you may be... And look at that by Sildor. There you go. That's what we're talking about. Sometimes we do know what we're on about. He's getting an MG in the last passage of play because it's all about the victory points. It's about controlling infantry and stopping them capping. That's why coming here is as beautiful. The early game suddenly becomes in vogue once more in the super late game of coming here as battles. It's really exciting. Yeah. This is my... Oh, what's this on the left, uh, on the MG42? It just got dropped by the Major. It's uh, decoy artillery, so this isn't, uh, uh, this isn't proper artillery, but Nagano either hasn't seen it, which will be in his favor, or he uh, knew it was the fake. Here's a flank, by the way, Sherman's. Oh, yes, they're coming in. Backpack 40's waiting, though. Sherman's low and taken out. What a good positioning from Nagano. Meanwhile, the M1s have got those Sabbat rounds. Panzer IV, can he be assassinated yet again? Yes, he can! Asilda's making a YouTube montage here. Mon, get the camera. Oh my. 360 no scope from far range. Great work by Asilda. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely crucial to get the Panzer Fours down and keep that uh, tank superiority that Asilda has been relying on. Uh, Nagano, by the way, cleverly on the right hand side right now, trying to neutralize the VP there to, to stop Isildur getting that VP uh, drain on again. So we're just neck and neck on, on VPs right now. Um, 
it's, it's a really tense game, I have to say. Nagano is forced to go again for a Panzer IV. His tech has been completely stunted uh, in this game, and he's just going to have to play out of his skin with what he has. Yeah, he really is. And 84 victory points to 94 now. There's 10 in it. It's just basically nothing. Usually we say one of the players can't afford to make any mistakes. Now it's both. And with that double jeopardy, you know you're in for a, a good amount of slaughter. And that's what we're about to see. So buckle up, buckaroos. It's going to be a feisty one. Yeah, right now you're just seeing creative infantry flanks. The pioneers with the flamethrower trying to uh, negate the cone of fire for the 50 cal. And uh, they want to get up close. They want to just get everything off of that victory point. But uh, the 76mm Sherman there to support immediately. Second Panzer IV on the field now. So Nagano is back in it again. Pioneers trying to get out of there just about. Nagano, however, he's under pressure now because this central victory point could have been capped. Fortunately for him, he was able to get rid of the major which could have literally ended the game if we'd gotten a triple cap and then been able to sit on it for about a minute. Um, Panzer IV goes past that former garrison, sees the M1 AT guns and reverses away. It's not the moment. It's not the moment, Dan, to throw everything you can. He still wants to be considered. It's so tense. Really, really tense. Railway are to be called down on the M1s and... Uh... This is a great moment for the uh, Panzer IVs to move up. The AT guns are moving up as well. Uh, a great, great off-map uh, call-in to just help uh, yeah. get a foothold on the center of the map. It's AOD, Area of Denial, or Denial of Area. I can't remember the exact phrase, actually. It's a cool <laughs> way. He's denying the area to a soldier. Can't get in there, and uh, he's now going to have to look at this. He's... Ah. <laughs> Shouldn't have tried to reposition because the scatter caught him off guard there and he's got to recrew that <laughs> now and lose the manpower. Yeah, right now because the timing is just so uh, every second actually really counts for a lot here. You don't want to be recruiting AT guns at this point. You don't want to be thinking about that. You need it on the field. You need it on the front line. Um, clever, by the way, still though, destroying the green cover in the center that the Ostrupen were using. Grenades are going in, but Nagano is well on top of it to, uh, to dodge those. Trying to get a nade in in the north as well as a 50 cal. He gets it. However, the Sherman's now here. Neutralizes the victory. Oh, no, he's pinned. He was pinned concurrently with the cap completion, meaning he could cap no more, and he was forced away. That's brutal for Nagano, but it could be the saving grace for Asilda because he's got the center as the Russian. So the UK player, Asilda, he could have been out of it then had that been neutralized. It could have pushed him further down. And we have, there we go, the equalization we wanted as soon as I started saying it. 75, 75. Let's start the game now, Dan. Who's going to win? <laughs> right now, um... Right now, I would actually say Nagano is playing better than Isildur. Um, but that being said, Isildur uh, is now left being the one with resources. He does have the major. He can force away those positions in the center. He can reclaim uh, those VPs. So it, it's really interesting. Actually, it's very, very hard to, to call who's in the better position here. A great smoke from the major, though, to get into that VP. There's nothing Germans. to stop the decap. Oh, sorry to drop there. The Shermans, they're gunning for the Panzer IVs. They're going in. We've got a Vet 3 Panzer IV and a whisker of help, but the Pack 40s are ready. Indeed, he was taken out from afar. And the other Panzer IV, the Shermans, yet again on the grassy knoll. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Max range shots all game long, baby. Yeah, how do you come back from this right now? There are so many vehicles on the field for Isildur. Nagano lost everything in one one small misplay and Isildur has just whacked on combined arms he's now more effective with his infantry uh, and vehicles when they're together uh, oh dear. I think that's it could be we've got a cap in the south from Isildur by the very same Sherman this guy is a hero he feels that the Pat 40s were near him. Nagano's no zero. He was ready. He pushed in and he kept the victory point. Meanwhile, he's kept the victory point there. Two incredible actions by both players. The dis disembarkation of the Sherman crew to cap and then the repositioning of the Pat 40s to stop said capping. Oh my, what a game we're watching. This is historic. Well, probably not in the, the realm it's of so, humankind. It's so <laughs> tense. I mean... It's, uh, it reminds me going all the way back to ESL when we were watching like Jezelin and Barton, you know, like how tense the games were. Feynmanville has always produced those outstanding ace games. 
And uh, this is definitely another one of them. Um, they are just going neck and neck. But right now, it's just you've got to have absolute restraint from retreating early. You've got to be in the VPs constantly. You're sealed off 42 VPs. It's so, so tense. It is. It really is. And you, we just saw an example of that Storm's well called with retreating as late as possible. You have to have that guts and determination right now as the Pioneers are in a bad part of town. This is going to be a... Ca oh, they've dropped the flamethrower. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. This is now the... Oh, look at this in the south. He's got the rear rations. What's happened to Nagorno? He's had two or three minor losses around the map at the exact worst moment. But fortunately for him, he doesn't have the slightly higher victory point count. Uh, counts. 36 to 74. No jokes about mail-in ballots, please. <laughs> Pax in good position. However, Major's watching on. Sherman's going to reverse over to this area of the map that nobody ever uses. That was great repositioning of both AT guns at the same time to try and uh, force the, the Sherman away. Crucial. Uh, we're really just looking right now and thinking... Is there enough? Is there enough to go here? Panzer Grenadiers are trying to flank the uh, 50 cal in the center, so the Shermans are getting pulled back a little bit. We're about to see an AT gun go down with the veterancy. This this Panzer Grenadier has to do it now. They've got better received actually with veterancy. They've got Ostrup and helping as well. They, they, he doesn't have the southern victory point though, so that's all important. Rear echelon standing by. He's got a vet free pack 40 pushing on the weakened Sherman's back away. It's all going down on Famonville approach between these two fantastic players in the World Championship 2020. Hyperbole, superlatives, hype all needed because this game deserves it right now. Major dropping very real artillery on this vanilla MG. Ostrup and getting a cap off with very little remaining. Oh my, what a game we're watching. <laughs> Pat yeah, 40's already! The VPs equalized again, but this time going in favor of Isildur. The Major, by the way, fantastic play from this. Just stopping that D cap there, making it so oh difficult my. for Nagano. But Nagano's He's got about his pistol to lose out. everything. He's got his pistol out and he's winning. Pat 40, meanwhile, turns around to face the healthy Sherman, mean, me, meaning the very low health Sherman is able to survive. We've had a Faust go in on this, and we've got a Vet 3 MG42 in the center, but very importantly in the north, Ostrupen are on their own and they're capping right now. This is all getting very important. And in its dying act, the Pat 40 got a shot off and is recruited by the Ostrupen, but the other Pat 40 was standing by unneeded. He gets out of there. Vet 3 MG42, Imperius in the center. Stormless, what's happening in the north here? Call it for me. The north, the Ostrupen, they've just taken suppression, so they're getting into the building just to try and break that, perhaps find another way to get back into this. But actually, on the left side is more important. The Pioneers in green cover there, they had Flame Burst on the Major, but the Major won that engagement. Um, currently no VPs are draining right now, a Panzer IV has just hit on the field, Nagano's going for the crush, he's got to try to keep units from uh, oh. routing the MG42. Oh my god, it's crew, it's crew members of the Pac-40 versus the Major, there's two surviving, they're not firing, the third one was destroyed, so he's got no weaponry anymore. At first, we missed this engagement, at first he would have got some health damage, but because the two remaining have to man the weapon, they had no more DPS. He went in there with the crew weaponry, that's how desperate this game is. Oh, and he's paying the price of it, M1, AT guns now, possibly about to destroy the Panzer IV, but we get a very, very important bounce. Meanwhile, we've got a standoff in the north, there's 50 Cal versus Ostrupen in the house. And they're not playing Cluedo. They're trying to keep the game alive. Major, he's a hero. He needs to go back to desk duty. Will he survive to do so? It's actually a shame because the Ostrupen are outside of the line of sight and that uh, VP on and, and the right. So they could have actually capped that outside of outside of range. They just opened themselves up oh. by firing. Look at this battle here. He's recruited the pack. He's trying to get a bit of damage off so he can get the Faust in. Can he do it? Damage in! Get the shots! Yes, he gets it! Faust next, but it's all too late! It all was for nothing! Because Isilda held the center, the north didn't matter, and Nagano's victory points ticked down to zero. With all this incredible gameplay, we have Isilda as your unbeaten player in this tournament going into the grand final, and we'll be seeing much more of Nagano, unfortunately for him. What a game! GG, well played. Good to your camera.
no, we don't shift the tail. No, we're, we're not muted. We're not muted. We're not. I forgot to mute us, and then you heard our egos talking about. Oh, we did a really good job. I'm <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> do you know the Do you know the Do you know the sketch, the fish and chip sketch? Do you know it? From uh... oh man, it's so funny. <laughs> I'm gonna get the stats up. We'll We'll um let's have a look at the stats, shall we? Um, let me exit the game, and then I'll get them up in the UI. It's a little bit easier. My heart is genuinely, genuinely like a little bit. Hurty? Is that is that's not healthy, right? <laughs> no. Lay down the energy drinks. Lay I haven't had any. No, I haven't. I've no more caffeine for me, I think. <laughs> We've got our first grand finest. We're about to go into an ace game of the second uh semi final. This this situation, by the way, came about was you know, talking to Relic about the situation today and the mainstream wouldn't be able to catch all the action, so we you know, we figured something out and we're having these alternating games, but it means that we are not literally going to miss anything. No. Oh. It's crazy, really. I mean, um, <laughs> we've got, uh, this, this was this game number five, you were saying? Yeah, it's game number five. And then we have a best of we have another game to finish off the series and a best of five. It's going to be a long day. It's going to mm. be a seriously long day. It is really. It is really. Um, let's go over to the um, stat screen, shall we? And have a little look at that historic game. Let's have a look at the um, stats for Asilda. Best unit M118 gun, I can concur. <laughs> With a better uh, damage count than Stormless in a 2 versus 2. Low blow. <laughs> much, much better player than me. So <laughs> I don't know why I'm speaking. <laughs> I should have said. <laughs> um, Nagano, meanwhile, 18 guns are just really good at damage, it seems. Uh, we've already seen the KDs. Have a little look at the graph, army value wise. Poor Nagano. Someone in chat just saying, uh, uh, you know, Major was the real MVP. Uh, I wouldn't actually argue with with that. The fact that you know the Major is such a great unit. There's smoke. There's decoy. There's artillery, and it, it caused a lot of problems in that game for Nagano. You know, it's 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 kind of the answer to breaking the front line that Austria has. Uh, that was actually a really good. Uh, uh, really good preservation of that unit. Really good, you know, munition spend on the unit. So I actually think, um, you know, credit to credit to Isildur for for playing it so well. Um, I think he could give Dev M a, a run for his <laughs> money whilst playing USF head to head. Certainly could. And um, we got one more game of these uh, kind of they're not semi-finals. So the upper bracket and the lower bracket pre-final there's no semis in a double elimination but it's easier to say semis um so that's what we're saying let's uh, make the this this thing's not been auto updating today uh, unfortunately so i don't know why that didn't auto update but whatever let's return the logo to its former glory there we go and guys as you can probably guess we are gonna have a break and um, we do need a break but let's uh just check to spe spec out if the other game is started uh, has not started yet so we'll be back in five minutes um, if you missed the announcement earlier it's that there'll be a balance patch next year um, that's basically it in a nutshell <laughs> um, and yeah we'll see you, in, see you in a bit guys any words Stormless before we go yeah, just firstly, thanks to everybody who's uh, here right now at the moment supporting uh, competitive CO2 events. Really important to like have uh, have a good showing for a tournament like this. And uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate you uh, coming here, spending this time with us because we're enjoying the games too. We are, we are players and, and lovers of this game our, ourselves. So uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure for us to be presenting this to you. We hope you're enjoying it. And uh, if you like it, I mean, please do go and share the stream out, post it out on Twitter, any of like, you know, get everyone involved. Um, it, it means uh, a lot to us. Um, and of course, to, to Relic, uh, celebrating the 60th uh, anniversary. And, um, you know, uh, sorry, the, the Sega celebrating the 60th, 60th anniversary. Um, and yeah, it's just uh, let's just have a great time, and we'll see you in a few minutes when we come back for uh, for the lower the lower brackets.
Guys, let's get a vote up in chat, shall we? Let's get a vote up. No, just don't. Let's get a vote up in chat, shall we? Um, forward slash poll. Poll is now up. Dev, Dev M versus Ageman. Who will win? Who you think is going to win? That's what I want to know.